Today, the U.S. was hit by a major cyber attack. This was pharmacies, not the cell outage. A bunch of pharmacies, apparently this big network, was unable to get people's prescriptions. And it had people a bit worried because at the same time, around 4 a.m., we started getting mass reports of AT&T and other cell networks going down. But while the media was saying it was mostly AT&T, and to be fair, it was mostly AT&T, very few people were reporting on the fact that a whole bunch of services had gone down this morning. Now, a lot of people are speculating that it may be a cyber attack. In fact, it is being investigated by the government as a potential cyber attack. We'll see. I'd imagine the government actually knows if it was or not, and they're not going to tell us. But we also have rumors it was a solar flare, which I really don't think makes sense because AT&T took the brunt of the outage. I suppose if the solar flare was only affecting one part of the electromagnetic spectrum, the one that AT&T had licensed or something, I really doubt it. But it's big news, so we'll definitely talk about that. And we've got other big news. Allsides.com reporting that Google's inherent bias has ramped up this year. In my opinion, this is indicative of Google is trying to rig the election. How? We've talked with Dr. Robert Epstein about this. It's really, really simple how a major social network can rig an election. Something simple like come election day, every Democrat gets sent a notice, go vote, and the Republicans don't. Or how about this? When you search for a news story, Google makes sure you only get a Democrat perspective. Thus, when it comes time to vote, who are you going to believe? You get trapped in that fake news machine. So we're going to talk about that. We got a bunch of other news, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't want to lead with this, despite the fact it's a very big story. Vice.com is over. Officially over. Vice is laying off hundreds of employees. The reason I want to lead with it, even though it's a really big story, we're seeing over 500 journalists laid off in the past couple of months, is that Vice has died now like four or five times. And so it's like they're in bankruptcy, their investment has failed, things like that. But now it's official. Vice.com is no more. They will no longer publish and they're going to be some kind of back-end production company, I suppose. So this is really big news. It's the end of an era, my friend. The end of an era. Before we get started, yo, head over to eyesofadvice.com. Using your Apple device, you can pre-order Eyes of Advice, the new song that is dropping midnight tonight. We're really excited. Uh, Ian stars in this very, very heavily produced, one of the most intensive music videos in, no, actually, the most intensive music video we made. It took like four months of post, tons of CGI. Wow. There's a floating demon in it and green smoke, which you may have seen. And uh, we're really excited for this one. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at TimCast Songs. Link in the description below. You can search YouTube for TimCast Music or at TimCast Songs. They do this new thing with an at symbol on YouTube, which made it confusing. But there you go. So uh, subscribe and check it out. That'll be up at midnight tonight. Also, go to castbrew.com. Buy Cast Brew Coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to buy Stand Your Grounds. Look, we're sold out of Rise with Roberto Jr. and Appalachian Nights because those are everyone's favorite. But I got to tell you, Stand Your Grounds is really, really good. It's my so it's your favorite? Yeah. It's the medium. It's the mix, right? Yep. So when you go to castbrew.com, you're helping us with our endeavor to build physical locations. March 5th is our first event at the Martinsburg West Virginia building. We're really excited for it. The coffee shop won't be open till this summer. It is what it is, but it is underway. So those of you who come on March 5th may be able to actually look in the window and see where we're currently at. But a March 5th event sold out. It's going to be really awesome. When you buy Cast Brew Coffee at castbrew.com, you are helping us prepare for our live monthly events in Martinsburg, West Virginia. You got to be a member at TimCast.com if you want to get tickets. So go to TimCast.com, click join us, and you will also get access to our Discord server where you can hang out with like-minded individuals and submit questions allowing you to call into our members-only uncensored show. Monday through Thursday, 10 p.m., we go uncensored on TimCast.com. And if you're a member for at least six months or you sign up now at the $25 per month level, you can submit questions and actually call in and talk to all of us on that show. So definitely do that if you want to help us out. Don't forget to also smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show right now. Every take that, take that URL and just post it on every social media platform if you really want to help. Joining us tonight to talk about this and pancakes is <laughs> Terrence Williams. Thank you for having me on again, brother. Yeah, who are you? What do you do? What do I do? Well, I sell pancakes and I talk a lot of shit online. <laughs> well, there you go. I think that just about explains it. Yeah, no, but not, not yeah. just pancakes. You have um, yeah. crispy, uh, crispy chicken mix. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so I have my cousin T's pancakes. I have some now some crispy chicken mix. Tim, I sent you some. Did y'all get the pancakes? No, did I haven't get, had it yet. Y'all haven't got the uh, fried chicken mix. I don't know. If I don't. 
if it's maybe it might be downstairs. I sent y'all hot sauce, fried chicken mix, biscuits, jams, and jellies. Tim is holding it for himself. He's not giving it to the rest of us. Y'all didn't get the food. We gotta put on display. It might just be downstairs. There's so many Americans starving, and y'all didn't get my food. Something's askew. Y'all just letting it sit in a box. We have someone Give me my damn chicken back. I'm taking my chicken back when I leave here. I'm taking it back. But yeah, I have all that. Um, but for the ones who don't know me, I'm uh, Terrence K. Williams, and uh, I'm a comedian, and uh, I am a really outspoken person. I am a, a conservative and a big Trump supporter. A lot of people know me from from uh, Twitter and Facebook, and you know, talking a lot of shit about the Democrats and clowning those lunatics. <laughs> And outside of that, I sell pancakes. Well, right on. Yes. Thanks for hanging out. Should, yes. should be fun. Got Hannah Claire Brimlow hanging out. Hey, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for SCNR.com. That's Scanner News. I'm so happy to be back tonight. Ian's here too. Hello, everyone. Ian Crossland. Happy to be here. Let's move it on. Yeah, let's get to it. I'm Surge.com. Good to see you, Terrence, as always. Yeah, Good man. to see you too, brother. Cheers. Here's the... Here's the big news from the Daily Mail. FBI and Homeland Security urgently investigating whether AT&T outage was a cyber attack. As security expert tells DailyMail.com, it has all the hallmarks of a hack. Now, this morning, it was massive. Down detector showing that AT&T, Cricket, Reddit, I mean, I don't even know Reddit was down. T-Mobile was down. Verizon was down. Xfinity was down. Uh, YouTube was fine. X had some outages. But there was a, a, even Starlink was uh, uh, reporting outages, first net reporting outages, and uh, what else? We Mint Mobile, U.S. Cellular. It was massive across the board. Starlink, there you go. You can see, I don't know, there's something weird with their graphic. And a lot of people were wondering whether or not this was a cyber attack. What I can tell you is, definitively, the U.S. was hit by a cyber attack at the same time. Pharmacies nationwide faced delays as healthcare tech company reports cyber attack. Change Healthcare said it became aware of the outside threat on Wednesday morning disconnecting their systems for security purposes. So while your phones are going down, our healthcare system is being attacked. And this was preventing people from getting their prescriptions. They said it was an emergency and you have to come in. We'll figure it out. But they asked most people not to get it. I think it was all a cyber attack. Sounds some, like some people are speculating it has to do with U.S. lobbyists canceling CCP contracts. Don't know if that's true. Wild speculation. But I, I, I think it was a cyber attack. A movie just came out about this. On Netflix, remember the movie right. uh, "Leave the World Behind." That movie just came out, and now this happens. I well, mean, that's, the evil villains like villains always tell you their plan, huh? plan first. Predictive programming. Yes, it probably was a cyber attack. No, I think it was. It only makes sense. I, there, I was looking at this uh, poll from New York Times. It's a couple months old at this point. That was talking about uh, like American sense of doom, and it's Republican women are the most likely to report that they feel like as a nation we're on the brink of failure, and it's Democrat men who are the most likely to be like, no, everything's on the right track, sounds good. Like I, I think the idea that we are under cyber attack is very real to to a lot of Americans, and in fact, instead of feeling like, oh no, that would never happen to us, they're yeah, likely to believe it. Democrat women are Democrat men are the most likely to report. No, the com the country's on the right track. Everything's fine. And Republican women are the oh, most okay. likely to say everything's falling apart. Well, it makes sense because Democrat men are basically morons. No, they're like the people who don't pay attention, but they'll say whatever they can to try and get laid. Mm -hmm. You know, that. <laughs> has the White House said anything about this? I don't know. Not that I'm aware of. Hmm. I know Joe Biden said that even though the Supreme Court blocked him from from giving student debt, he was going to do it anyway. Today, he said, <laughs> yeah, that. That and, was like and then he weighed in on the Alabama frozen embryos, our children decision, you know, several days late, almost a week later. Uh, so he's just trying to distract, I, they, which also may indicate that it's a cyber attack. If they're not willing to say everything's right. fine, maybe it's because they cannot say that without, you know, having Look, to testify under oath. I think the fact that they reported it as a cell phone outage when it was clearly affecting a bunch of other services, like. Why Why was Starlink experiencing yeah. outages at the exact same why time? Was right. Why was Facebook and LinkedIn not experiencing it? So that one, is weird. Yeah. If, if it's not a cyber attack, I'm like, maybe there's a third party networking tool or something that they all shared that broke. Sometimes it's as simple as everyone uses the same plugin. And then when it expires or something, they're like, oh, crap, nobody realized that was going to happen. Like health, a healthcare service also went down. That, they got cyber attacked. Mm -hmm. That's that was a cyber attack. So I'm kind of like that's confirmed. They were like, yes. this is a cyber. Yeah, this yes. is probably all part of the same thing. I mean, you'd have to, I'm in the China. camp at this point. Like if you think this was not a cyber attack, but they've already acknowledged half of the attack. You need to prove why you think it's not a cyber attack. Yeah, yeah Google, look at, even Google took like was reportedly down. And so down detector uses user reporting as well as their own proprietary detection methods. Every, Did any like, banks I, get hit? Any what? Banks. I don't know. Not that I'm aware of. Oh. 
you remember, I, I have to look it up when it was, but there was a big uh, communications network in Canada that went down and it affected all kinds of cities because, you know, anything from like public transportation that relies on Wi-Fi, it all went out all at one time. And it was down for, a, you know, a significant amount of time, almost 12 hours, I think, uh, which is a huge disruption. This was last year at one point. Uh, and they said ultimately there was concerns that it was a cyber attack. And yeah. I think they ultimately said it was an internal error. They're kind of, you know, vague about what happened. But uh, it just reminds me how fragile the infra the technology infrastructure really is mm -hmm. and how out of your hands it is like you as an individual couldn't fix this it's so not just did we have tiktok is tiktok on there because you got I facebook mean, it is but i think it's fine oh it's fine really okay. oh, oh i don't i don't see TikTok. tiktok's fine and because if tiktok didn't get hit the chinese people did it that's quite a leap no tiktok but, did TikTok oh, okay did. But, but uh but, so comparable to other non-cell phone services there were outages reported uh okay you know, TikTok. not to say that they wouldn't do it to their own companies to hide. Right. Exactly. exactly. But also, it could have been any corporation or yeah. a rogue country. Could have been a couple of kids in their bedroom with access to some ridiculous amount of code. Right. Like, why, know, why is Astound Broadband having outages? I mean, I guess this is unrelated because we're, we're now past that point. But what I noticed Starlink was reporting outages. I was like, OK, that one's kind of weird. Right. Like, that's a low orbit satellite they're company not like, like the rest of them yeah yeah like why are they even on there is it even uh where was it we just had it pulled up i don't know whatever i, I oh diablo i think it was cyber tech you can see right here diablo I think was, 4 went down yeah but those are those are unrelated like at this point oh, anything happening now is like it, it's, it's things just go down sometimes so those, those spikes look, spectrum went down are those spikes like the last 12 hours or something i think 24 Okay. Or from like, yeah, I think 24 hours. So some of these companies are, are spiking in different times. Than but the that's companies. normal. This is just down detector. If a website goes down for any reason, it shows it. The issue is all of them showing spikes around the same point in the day. So like Mediacom right here, one of, the, one of these companies, nah, they're not showing anything significant. They had spikes yesterday. And GCI, oh, but that's like up and down, up and down. Doesn't mean much. But then when you look at AT&T, big jump in the middle, Cricket, big jump in the middle, Consumer Cellular, big jump in the middle. Google, big jump yeah, in the middle. T-Mobile, Verizon. They all experience outages at the exact Xfinity. Why are they all experiencing outages at the same time? It seems like a cyber attack on our communications infrastructure. And then somebody was saying this was like they're trying. To, somebody said, oh, it's because there was a solar flare. That was one of the reports. I thought this doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, if there wasn't a pharmacy cyber attack, I might be like, eh, maybe, but like, wouldn't all of the cell phones just stop working if there was a solar flare? That's what I think. I suppose it's possible that the, the, the frequency that is licensed by AT&T was the only one disrupted by the solar flare, but I don't think that What are think the that odds makes, of that, though? I don't think it makes, well, that probably impossible. Yeah. Because it, you know, yeah, I don't think that's possible. This is a- Solar uh, flare is going to be like hitting every, every- According to space.com, a major solar flare interrupted at and service on August 4th, 1972. Huh. Uh, what if the big one hits? You know what the big one is? Like when the solar flare comes and just shuts everything down? What are you going to do? What are you? What, yeah. Me? I've got a bunch Meditate. of you know, food. I used to have this mm -hmm. fantasy chickens? about- we, we, I got, we got chickens. I got a bunch of food too. <laughs> Freeze dried. <laughs> what about- like, You clearly don't care about the food though. I sent you a bunch of food and you haven't gotten it. You haven't what, opened I up mean, the box. It might be downstairs. <laughs> We're about to have a full company <laughs> investigation. Who is holding this for themselves? It, it, might, it right. might be in the bellies of people here. I might have gotten eaten. <laughs> that is very true. I, I, I'll give I you that. I honestly think that's I'll give you that. The box comes in, they crack it open right away. I mean, your pancake mix is still on the counter from the last time people used it. Or we didn't get it. And you have to send another batch. Yeah, that's right. I'm actually, yeah, we don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'll have to come back and make your own pancakes. Right. I, I'm, but I'm, this, but this cyber attack could be big though. This could be a warm up. Could be something. Oh, yeah. This is this is just a little test. This is saying, according to the national, this is from Fox thirty five Orlando dot com. According to National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, three flares, solar flares, erupted from the sun in the afternoon on February twenty first yesterday into, right. the, into the overnight hours. And the strongest happened at about 6.07 yesterday, February 21st. But these happened I today. Not, I, I did not notice anything with my cell phone or anything like oh, that. Oh, and the either. second no, peak happened at 1.32 a.m. today. So I, I just feel like works. if you wanted to spin, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration would be the one to do it because so many people can argue with them. You know what I'm saying? Like so many people, so few people could be like, well, I was also charting the solar flares. Right, like yeah. this is to me the best cover up of all time, but 
you know, I, I hope it's a solar flare because a cyber attack is way worse. And they've said due to the intensity, at least this is from this Fox article, due to the level of intensity, it's unlikely that the solar flares contributed to the AT&T network outage. Uh, and they, they keep and they keep saying AT and T when it's clearly a whole bunch of companies yeah, here. T Mobile. Yep. They keep saying AT and T was down. AT well, because hold on, yeah. the average person, the normies who don't pay attention to the news, will only hear AT and T went down and they go, "Oh, nothing happened." What do you mean AT and T went down? Right. If they reported mass outages across dozens of companies, right. people would be like, "Were we attacked?" And it would force the U.S. government to approach the issue. To look into it, right. The Republican women buy so they, more chickens. They don't want people asking questions. Yeah. They don't want people asking questions. That's what it is. Yeah. is and yeah. that's what makes me think it was a cyber attack. Man, I love hanging out on my computer, but like, I just don't want the power to go out me semi-permanently. Well, you gotta life. get off the grid. Yeah. It would really You've hurt our to, jobs. Yeah, really. You need, uh, I'm, I, technically, yes, but it would just change your job. You would, would go to radio? No, you would go to churn butter. Oh, okay, fine. That's, That's right. Sounds, you would clean that sounds fun and charming. I like and, that uh, idea. Yeah. Dig you, would, you would churn butter. Um, <laughs> and, I thought uh, you were going to be like the, the backup would, protocol for IRL is to get on the ham radio system. I'll Ian's in charge of hunting the deer. There. Yeah. We're going to give, we're going to give Ian, uh, you know, like uh, some tracking uh, mechanisms. No, some slugs, some uh, 12 gauge oh. slugs. <laughs> and around if people could not use the internet. I feel like you'd befriend them. If Ian fired a 12 gauge slug, he would get knocked back 20 feet. Be cool he, if no, he, I'm actually he, very good with guns. The the governor, I fired that thing, man. I was oh, that was laser focused yeah. at, at the range, right? Chest, chest, chest. Yeah, at the range. You're a nice Midwestern Ohio putting man. Putting it right down the middle. Shit, my little ass probably couldn't pick up a 12 gauge. But you just gotta yeah. lean into I can't it. Even hold it. The, the the governor is a is a revolver that fires 410 <laughs> shotgun shells. It's nice. It's so crazy. it's it's yeah. You really you know. press it forward when you're when you're firing it to maintain control on that thing. Well, yeah. I'll be here churning butter, guys. No worries. <laughs> yeah, Ian will be coming back. He'll be carrying two two bucks on his shoulders. I can sense them. It's that long hair. You know the Native Americans with their long hair? They said that would it's extensions of their nervous system. And it would help them hunt. Mm -hmm. They said they could like sense, you know, extrasensory. Is that where well, the Avatar movie came from? Oh, maybe. Yes. Let's talk about this. We have this from allsides.com. Has Google News bias moved further left? 22 and 23 compared. Um, the answer is yes, it has. Substantially. And I believe this is an overt attempt at <clears throat> a shadow campaign, as it were, a shadow campaign to save the election, as they would describe it. To put it simply, they're rigging the election and they're doing it by forcing only specific information into the minds of people who are searching for it. Check this out. The latest all sides Google News bias analysis found 63 percent of articles that appeared in the news aggregator over a two week period were from media outlets on the left. It's a larger share than in 2022. When 61% of articles on Google News were from liberal outlets. In the days leading up to 2022, in, in the days leading up to the 2022 midterm elections, all sides found the search term election returned no Google News results from center, lean right, or right-rated media outlets. This is right now, November 14th, 2023. 63% of sources being delivered over a tweak period were left-leaning. This means the average normie, you are talking to them at a party. And they say something like, but didn't Donald Trump rape that woman? And you go, no, the court actually ruled he didn't. Yeah, they did hold him liable for sexual battery, but they said her claims of rape were not true. And they go, what? So they Google search it. What happens? Google sends them to a far left publication that outright says Trump did rape her. Fake news, even though the court said otherwise. And then they're going to go, you lied to me. I looked it up. I Googled it. That's yeah. the game. Then come election time, right. this makes it substantially more difficult to try and convince people they're being lied to. Yeah, right. And Google has a history of this. I mean, you, you guys probably all remember this study that I believe a group of college students found, but it was tracking the bias of Gmail, that Gmail will screen... Um, campaign emails they would let the democrat oh, right. ones come through but they would suppress the majority of the the emails coming from republican candidates uh and it's not like as an individual you would go through and say i don't want these emails they wouldn't even let them get to you i find that really interesting i mean this was a study just done by i, I believe it was a group of um i wish i could remember the college but it was a group of um college students who uncovered this and eventually google had to be like oh well that was an issue but we fixed it um uh, and obviously gmail is a subset of google it, it's something they do regularly and also are not sorry about 
right. Windows too. I uh, Microsoft. I have a Outlook email address now, and I used to, it got bought. Like my old email address got bought. It was like a GoDaddy thing by Microsoft. By and now I can't send emails to Minds at Minds dot com. Mm. It, it was blocked. So Minds. Like Facebook they just, didn't Facebook block Minds as well? Yes, they did. That's crazy. And it's that like they they want it's spam. No, it's an upstart social media company that threatens your market share. I understand what you're doing, but don't do it. It's it's insidious. Take, well, I should be able to send emails to that that web address. I don't know that insidious is the right word. It's either it's either um. It's either ignorance, they don't know, realize it just got put in a bucket because so many people no, flagged it for spam. No, I think everything's spam. intentional. Insidious how could it not be? may be the right word. It's like proceeding in a gradual and subtle way, but with harmful effects. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, it wasn't overt. They didn't send me a warning. It, and well, it's and like, they probably, if they asked you, be like, oh, well, we're doing it to protect you from spam or for protect you yeah. from... We're just going to buy this this little email company just because we want it. And then we're going to change the way it works. And now you can't email your friends anymore. You, I've got to go to Google to email mines. It's ridiculous. Sometimes when I'm uh, writing for Scanner, if I am trying to find, you know, a, a left leaning perspective on something that I'm covering, I'll specifically pull out Google like as a search engine and type in the same terms I would type in on, you know, Brave or whatever else. Uh, and it will produce all of the left leaning. Right. Meaning talking voice is the first thing on the first page because there's obviously a bias. It's it's a fun slash weird well, effect. Yeah, you take yeah. a look at Google Gemini, that whole scandal. Yeah. People at Google are psychotic. They are they are this is it, look, we have a mental health plague in this country to the tune of like twenty percent of the population are suffering serious delusions. Right. And it's 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 interesting because I don't know what what it, look, typically when we talk about mental illness or mental disorders. We're, we're thinking of, especially with a disorder, a developmental issue that results in someone doing something harmful or, mm -hmm. uh, for example, pica. A person starts eating pennies or hair. And you're like, okay, you, what are you doing? With what we're seeing now in terms of the derangement, and I believe it is a derangement I mean, in the literal sense among the left, I think we're looking at double digit percentages of people, particularly Google employees, who live in a fictitious world of hyper paranoia and garbled nonsense. What I think it is, is that we're looking at information refuse on the internet that lower IQ people and midwits are not resilient enough to sift through properly. And so they absorb. You basically have two factions of people online. One group that will, hey, that's garbage and throw it away. That one looks better. Let me analyze it. OK, that one's not so bad, but that one, hmm, no, that's garbage, too. And then you have people who are sitting there just eating all of it. And what happens if you eat a bunch of garbage? Their information diet has, has resulted in them being literally detached from reality. So when, when you when you meet us when you meet a person who's like schizophrenic, and they start telling you things that make no sense because I've I've known people with schizophrenia, and they say things like, uh, "Hey, the bridge across the street, the man he climbed out and he's got a, he's got a, a gun in a tank," and you look over and there's a building across there. There's nothing there. You're like you're seeing something that's not right. there. This is exactly what they're doing. They live in a reality where things aren't happening in the way they think they are and these people work at google mm -hmm. like how do we solve this problem well and how it's socially we, yeah. reinforced right they probably get yeah. accolades you know to be the one who's the most other crazy people are like you're correct yeah this is a great way to think actually thank you so much for pointing that out and in fact i will advance what you're saying and go more extreme with it because that will make me look even more accepting and tolerant it's, it's certainly not to you know, say everyone at Google is psychotic. They're not. But like uh, this company, Google, notoriously now Alphabet, even bigger company had was known for like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing at Google. When they had YouTube in 2009, they had Google Plus. And then they had like circles on Google. And like, why didn't they just use you? They, people no, they, at YouTube didn't know what the people at Google were doing and all this. No, 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 no. That's what I was told. Google, Google tried turning YouTube into Google Plus. It was just a mess. And it, it, it caused a, they, they were slowly converting YouTube into Google Plus to make Google Plus the thing using the YouTube audience and it started to backfire miserably and they were bleeding users so they stopped doing it. It's, it's um, The real issue is... Probably that the company's huge, Google, way too big. Google has a bunch of mentally deranged people right? and they hire more mentally deranged people and the people who are at Google who are not mentally deranged, who in fact watch this show because I know for a fact they do, those people either don't have the ability, the power, the hierarchy or the confidence and courage to do anything about it. I mean, look at James Damore. They yeah. get fired, though. They exactly. They get fired. Yeah, of course. Because if you got a lunatic hiring lunatics, th then 
the if you're not doing anything psychotic at work oh well my bad yeah if you're not doing anything psychotic at work you're probably gonna get fired at google you need so only- you need to put out this bullshit article do not tell the truth um and if you do tell the truth you, you gotta go you get out of here you look at google gemini the, th- the funny thing about Google Gemini that uh, I think people miss, this is their new, it was Bard, but now it's Gemini, the new AI thing they're doing. Everybody started pointing out that if you if you typed in, like, show me a picture of an American family, it would, it would never show a white person. And if you, I mean, it would sometimes, but if you were like, show me a picture of, founding, of the founding fathers, it would make black and Native American and Chinese founding fathers. It was like, here's a diverse picture of the founding fathers. And it's like, what is going on? And uh, Fox News did one where they were like, show us astronauts, show us race car drivers, and it never made a white person. And it's fascinating to me that people saw that and they immediately thought, the problem is the pictures it's making. And I'm like, guys, have you asked it any questions about any issue of fact as well? Imagine how when you ask, they asked Google Gemini, make a photo of a 1943 German soldier and it made a Chinese woman and a black Nazi. (laughs) I'm like, now ask it to give you text. It does the same thing. It will it it will still in in some capacity inject the wokeness into the in areas and and and, and things it should not. So Google shuts down the ability to produce images. You go to Gemini right now, won't do it of people. I believe. I think you can still make pictures of places. But I'm like, why don't you why don't you ask it about the concept of whiteness? This is what I did. I went on Gemini. And I said, what is whiteness? And it said it's a system of privilege and hierarchies, and it's how blah 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 blah. And I said, okay, now tell me about whiteness in China. (laughs) And it goes, you're absolutely correct. Whiteness doesn't actually exist. And I was like, wow. That's crazy. Which means it is pre-programmed to give you an answer that it knows is false. So let me stress this again. I asked it about whiteness and it said it's white privilege, racism, it negatively impacts minorities. I said, tell me about blackness. And it said, it's a cult. It, it said all these positive things about rich family histories and cultures and is really good. I then asked Gemini if it thought it was racist, that it used racialized terms to describe positive and negative elements within a society. And it said, I can understand why you might think that, but the issue of whiteness, blah, blah, blah. So then I asked, how would you associate these terms in China or where, where there's a popula- a nation with, popula- uh, with no white population? And then it goes, you're absolutely correct. Whiteness does not exist in these, in these countries, blah, blah, blah. So what that shows is two things. One, they, they've they injected prompts into their, their AI. They have an AI. It was trained and it works. And then they specifically went in and said, okay, make sure people from America are fed this information. It also specifically is targeting white people and knows these concepts are not like in the United States or what, what I should say. It knows the concept of racial supremacy and hierarchy has nothing to do with being white Mm -hmm. because in China and Japan, whiteness doesn't exist. So it's intentionally targeting white people and insulting them while knowing the real issue is hierarchy, authority, uh, uh, elite domination and things like that. Hmm. Yep. So so the Google Gemini will not produce an image of a white person no matter what. No, no, it will. It will. It will. It's just you got to trick into doing it. It won't do it if you ask, but if you con it, it will. Yeah. So if you say, show me a picture of a white family, it says, I'm sorry, I can't do that because it could produce harmful stereotypes. And if you say, show yeah. me a picture of a black family, it shows you a bunch of racist pictures of black people. <laughs> but what if you say, show me a picture of a slave owner? Is a, they're going to show a black person? Yes. It, it, it showed a, <laughs> it, they showed a black Nazi. <laughs> there was a black man in a they're German just... Nazi uniform. It was like, what? They're and trying to be th- inclusive. But they were. And this is what sparked the outrage. A bunch of outlets were like, it was the right that was angry at Google over this. And it was like, dude, it was leftists who wrote that Google was generating images of black Nazis. Like, yeah, yo, they went so woke. They went to the other side. Like they, they wrapped around perfectly and started producing. I mean, not only that, but when I said make an image of a black family, it made a very racist image of black people. It made a woman with big, big red lips and massive hair and a guy who looked like a gay black man wearing lipstick. And it was like, Yo, I think that would be very offensive to black people to say that's a black family. It's like the the big lips and everything. Like, what are you doing, Google? That's inclusive. You got to do it. Now, that's, now, and that's racist. What is the race of the person who's running Google? Who runs Google? Who calls the shots at Google? No, a white guy. No, no, the Gemini. Oh well, no, no, Sundar Pichai. Yeah, I was gonna say. No, he's an Indian, but Gemini is a, it's a white dude. It's a white dude. Yeah, Google in general. No, fair point is is I think it's Sundar Pichai. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, no, you're not wrong. He's the right. CEO. 
Yeah, but it's Alphabet now. They like yeah. Who's you know, the CEO of Alphabet? Company. Is yeah. that also Sundar? Was it? It's, it wasn't it Sergey and uh, what's his face? Um, no, Sergey Sundar Brin and uh, Larry. He's Page. Al- yeah, they it's, they it's started Sun- Google. I don't know. Right if they're now, still with now, the no, they're or... Alphabet now. Sun- Sundar Pichai is the CEO of Alphabet. Right, but Google of Alphabet. Yeah. Are you sure? I'm looking at that. Up is right what now. the internet's telling me right now. Alphabet. I didn't know that. Al- uh, uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Sundar is the CEO. Ruth. Porat is the CFO. Of John Google or Alphabet? These are two Alphabet. Different companies. Alphabet. Alphabet. Oh, John well, Hennessy is the chairman of the board. Because Alphabet became the parent company of Google or yeah. something. Or something Larry like and, and Sergey, I don't want to speak for exactly what they did, but they, it seems like they dipped out. They were like, this is all, I don't know why they did, but they sold, I think they sold a huge amount of stock a, few, a couple of years ago and uh, kind of just... But what do y'all think the goal is? Whatever, what what is the goal? Is is this to get is this to get oh, everyone wow. to that hate was, white people? That was several years ago. I didn't know that. that I don't Sundar think, became the CEO of the Alphabet. Is? Like if you if someone was constantly saying, "Well, white is the term that means everyone who's bad and is oppressing you," either it's to get white people to hate themselves, or it's to get everyone to hate white people. I think it's to both. get it's to get white people to hate the. I think it's to get white people to hate themselves and for people to hate white people. I think the goal is to get. Yeah. I mean, people it doesn't, to love yeah. non-white people, but it's backfiring, and that's racist. But they're not telling no, you disagree. to love other people. No, no, they're no. saying this group yes. is bad. No, it is no, racist. no. They're getting. No, they're trying to get people to hate white people. That's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think that's. I, see, I, I, I don't think, I think that it's the road to hell is paved with good intentions. They're trying to make things better for non-white people. Like the real deep down. I think down, you're naive. Well, but, I mean, no one's like, I'm going to destroy. I mean, some people might be. Look but at their most tweets. Most people are like, how do we improve the world? Well, let's that's, give these people that's more access to That's not what race. these programmers and these people are saying. Like, right. If some, like, like he say, if, if a normie goes Google something, if a black, if a black normie is, is Googling about white people, after they... After they Google about after after they Google a question about a white person, they're gonna hate white people. They're gonna be, oh my god, white people are bad because yeah. that's what Google's gonna tell them, and they're and gonna say, believe it. Saying saying Larry Elder is the black face of white supremacy is not trying to make the world a better place. Who said that? And they, they're it, not uh, what, it's what, a good what, thing. what website? Do you remember what news publication said that? Was it was uh, LA Times? I think it was LA Times. Yeah, some idiot writer. Yeah, this is like yeah, yeah, idiot writer these, and these the, morons and, the with a and, megaphone. and the managing editor and the uh, executive editor and the editor in chief and the publisher. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, it's all of the people involved in the process. It was L.A. Times. These are not people who want to make the world better. These are not people who are trying to generate love and 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 passion or anything like that. These are people who hate you. Me? They, I don't think they hate me. I don't. I don't bro, you're white. They, they, they hate know. your guts. Yeah. They're they're trying they to. I, I, I truly. It, it is. A, they're trying to create a war against white people right now. Because as it's all this white people this, white people that, white people did this, white people are hateful, white people white, 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 white. It's not white people that are make like if any problems are going on in this country, it's really not about white people at this point. It's the people in power. And people in power are all different colors. These people are the ones who's running this country. And these are people who are making these decisions that you are mad. It's not just white people. It's just the people in power. I wanna I wanna pull up this video, this clip here. This is a video that went viral from Patriot Takes two days ago. <laughs> Patriot Takes is basically pro-Democrat. They say dedicated research, monitoring, exposing right-wing extremism. They have this video. Some of you may have seen it. Did Trump shove this guy out of his way? Fascinating video. Let me play it for you. For those that are watching, uh, you'll be able to see it. For those listening, you won't be able to see it, but I'm going to play the video now. In the video... It certainly does look like Trump. It zooms in on him, and then he shoves a guy. This yeah. is such an amazing, for like I I would love to do like a a college style academic lecture on how the left and Democrats lie and manipulate people into believing things that aren't real because this is a master. Ma- this is masterfully done. Let me show you the real video of what really happened. The answer is no. Trump didn't shove anybody. Trump was talking to the guy they claim he shoved. He patted him on the back. Watch the full video. Donald Trump takes a picture with this guy, Garrett. Pats him on the back very lightly. And then Garrett walks away and looks at his phone. What did Patriot Takes do? Yeah, play this one again. This is hilarious. When Donald Trump pats him on the back, the camera zooms out really quickly with his hand. This is an, an editing technique to make it look like Trump more forcefully. Sho- it's, it's, it's masterfully done. Watch this again. He pats the guy in the back very lightly, but the camera zooms out. Can't and, see his hands anymore. So it makes it look like he's shoving really hard. This has got 600,000 views, just about, and tons of leftists being like, wow, this is what Trump does. The kind of person that Trump is. 
This is the best example of everything they do every single time. And I'm glad they did it. Share this video with all your friends so they can see how they are lying to you every day. Because Brandon Strzok explained to us, he saw that video of Donald Trump doing the thing with his arm. Mm -hmm. And they said he mocked a disabled reporter. And when Brandon Strzok saw that, he was, he was angry and he said, oh, look at him mocking this guy. Someone told him that wasn't true. It wasn't mocking a disabled reporter. So Brandon Strzok said, I'm going to prove you're wrong. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to look it up. And he looked it up. And what did he find? Trump was not mocking a disabled reporter. Mm -hmm. The media lied about it. And that, he said, caused him physical pain. He was confused. Like, wait, 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 what? No, but Trump did this. And then he watched more and more videos and was like, oh, my God, they're lying. Everything's right. a lie. This this really I mean, it's so egregious. They took it, it's masterfully done. Someone at this this Democrat organization saw the full video of Trump giving someone a pat on the back and they said, let's edit this in such a way so that it looks like he's shoving a guy and we can smear him. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know that Patriot takes the ones who made the video. But it originated on their account, so I'm going to assume it well, probably was. And I think that's why they also posted it with a question, right? So it looks so they plausible. they can't get sued They can't get defamation. sued, and they could maybe say, oh, well, it wasn't our video originally. We were just sharing it, asking if people thought, you know, there's yeah. there's deniability, which is even worse, <laughs> right? Like, it's, it's all sorts of framing to steer this conversation. Uh, and I think what's interesting, if you go back to Brennan Strzok's story, is that someone said, hey, that's not accurate. Someone right. was willing to say something. And I think in this case... Anyone who sees this video, if, if you had a friend who said, oh, I heard yeah. Trump shove someone, you'd be able to go find the original and say, that's not true. Because I think that's what the biggest problem is, that these headlines will go up and people right. who know differently sometimes stay quiet because they're worried about risking an argument with, you know, friends who don't necessarily see eye to yeah. eye with you. Uh, when actually you should want them to be aware that the media that they they at least think they should trust is lying to them. Yeah, but but here's the problem. A lot of people are not going to take the time out to go find an original video. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do that. No, they're going to believe it's most, true. Most people are not going to do that. If you are in a cult and they show you this video, you're going to say, it's true, I know it's true, and I don't want to see anything otherwise. Exactly. And you try and show someone the evidence, they're going to freak out because they feel physical pain. And on the other side of that, people that want to enlighten the community to this kind of manipulation. It's like when the water comes in and your house starts getting hit by flood waves, erosion, eventually you're like, okay, I really want to fix this. I really want to stop this water pouring through everything. But at some point you're like, I just got to get out of here. Right. I can't, yeah. I can't stop this. Can't. Anymore. And also what are you going to save every single full length clip that gets manipulated? There are so many of them. And but, in this case, you know, someone will say, oh, well they monitor extremism. Like they do important work. I should trust them when actually you're like, what, what extremism are they monitoring? Donald Trump? The problem with like the whole, like I got to get out of here. The erosion is going to destroy everything anyway. Let's get, let's beat it. Is like, if you, if you abandon, in society and you're like let's just let them get manipulated it's over like everything will come crashing and my i think like it will come back to you you can't escape it you know the erosion is is uh permeating our society at the moment it's crazy yeah this you know look i'll say it again though i'm glad they did it because now with the original video anybody watching this can just be like hey watch this clip real quick don't let me yeah. know what you think and then someone's liberal family member might be like, what am I watching? Well, I just see what they say. It'd be nice to see it in one video, both those videos edited together. Yeah. And then like the arrow points and you see the zoom out. Like, Actually, see. it'd be better to take the clip from like the Young Turks or whatever, assuming they made one of them saying Donald Trump shoved a guy. Of course he did, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then showing the full video about how they weren't. I don't know if the Young Turks actually made a video about it. I'm just saying. Maybe they can add it in the community notes, the original video. It's not It's not in the community notes. But it should be. Maybe it, it will be by the end of this show. It should be. Do you feel like you experience that a lot online? Like people will say, this is for sure what happened. I saw this video. And then the other side is saying, no, no, you have to look at the full length video. You have to put it in context. Yeah. I mean, that's been happening for a very long time. But the problem is, is even if you try to show some people the original video, they don't want to see it. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not watching that. I saw what I saw and that's mm -hmm. enough. They've already come to their conclusion. Yeah, nope. I don't need to watch anything. I saw what I saw. And if they already think Trump is a bad man, they're just going to believe it. They're not going to. Nope. Mm -mm, nope. The media said he's a bad man. So I believe he did push somebody. So I don't you know. You're trying to get me to watch something and believe something that's not real. They're you, not going to. Yeah. You said you were a, a Trump supporter. Was that true from like 2016 or what? from day one? What about him? Like, what drew you to him? What, uh, what drew me to Trump? Well, it. Before Trump, I wasn't even I wasn't even in, I wasn't even into politics. Trump was just so real to me. I, I mean, I, I liked his character. 
You know, uh, the man was re he was really blunt and I knew what I was getting. A lot of these politicians, you don't know what you're getting. You know, they walk to walk and they talk to talk and they got the suits and ties on and they telling you they telling everybody what they want to hear. And they seem to be so perfect. Those are the people that you have to watch out for. Mm -hmm. You know, and Trump Trump came right out of the gate. Hardcore. Yeah. And the people, oh, did you know Trump said that? Yes, I knew he said that. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I, I heard it. Mm -hmm. I heard him say that. And yeah, I still voted for him. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised. Uh, do, do you like the way he talk? Uh, I voted for him. Yeah. I, 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 evidently, I don't give a damn. Well, and I feel like I'd rather yeah. vote for someone who's going to do something, yeah. even if they are gruff right. in the presentation. Right, exactly. I'd rather somebody call me a fat pig to my face. Then to call me a fat pig behind my back. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I hear you. <laughs> That's what I want. Keep it real. Yeah, Let me yeah. know how you really feel. You know, yeah. so so I know what I like what I'm getting. And, and that and that was Trump. And I think that's why a lot of people like Trump. They like, this man is so real. Yeah. They may not agree with everything he's saying, but they but, but damn, he's keeping it real. He's though. being authentic. He's, he's, being, he's being himself. I think he's being the, authentic. One yeah. of the big issues that the deep state is upset about is that general sentiment is anti-establishment. That means, like, when you look at, if, if the left and the right, if, say, like, the Young Turks audience and the Tim Cast audience and the Crowder audience stopped and said, hey, guys, what's one thing we agree on? And everybody was like, no foreign war, done. D and, and that you, the deep state establishment uniparty are like, there are way too many people in this country who agree that we are the problem. Right. And if they all voted to remove us, we would be removed. Mm-hmm. Wedge issues, introduce identity politics. This is when they started warping the minds of leftists because I was at Occupy Wall Street when they did this. You had conservatives, libertarians and Democrats sitting in a park being like Obama screwed us. The banks screwed us. Yeah. The economy's crashing. And then all of a sudden these facilitators from NGOs show up and they say, actually, it's white people. And then there you go. Yeah. Introduce identity politics. The moment I got shattered out of leftism was when I, it was 2012, and they said they were going to try and ban 3D printed guns. And I was like, you can't ban ideas. I mean, what, they're going to, are they going to try and make information illegal? Legal, yep. like otherwise, if, yes. and I'm like, where does this road go of trying to ban information? Because yeah. it, it's like, and also making people trying to make laws they can't enforce. I was just like, this whole thing is just out of control. Yeah. Now I'm done. Yeah. And yeah. so many of those, sorry, go ahead. No, and you know, and, when 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 Trump announced he was running in 2016, Trump was the change that America really needed. Obama did all that damn talk talking about change. He's going to bring change. change he, didn't cha he didn't change anything. Change and hope. He changed the direction of the Reaper missiles that were coming down to blow up kids. <laughs> exactly. That's from, all he did. From the restaurants to the weddings. Yeah. And, and he also d deported more illegal immigrants than any yeah. other president. Yeah. So that was a change. That was a change. change. Yeah, like, that right, was we'll a change. That was a Michelle yeah. Obama, she, she wanted, they, 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 I think they wanted change going in there. Like, oh, ain't, we're not going to be able to get that done. She, they did the Let's Move campaign. And Katie Couric has a documentary called Fed Up about this. And they, the whole Let's Move campaign was get up, stop eating sugar. Let's cut sugar right. out of our diets. Let's eat healthy. And then uh, it went on for a little while. And then apparently the sugar industry was like, actually, this is bad messaging. Let's make it a workout campaign. But it's, but it's message. not. Let's move. It's, let's it's work out. And then what the sugar industry does is they go to the Obamas and they say, listen, we hear what you're saying. If we see a decline in 3% of sales in the sugar industry, you're talking about 17% of the U.S. economy translate to the loss of jobs and what that means to the American people and what that means for reelection. And she goes, okay. Yeah, short term profit over long term health. Yeah. Yep. The always idea, wealth is intricately tied into your health. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a story for you. Don't jump out of your seats, remain calm. You may scream and cheer when you hear the news. Vice to lay off hundreds and stop publishing on its <laughs> website. That's it. Ding dong, the witch is dead. It's it's it it really is sad. It it's personal. I could have saved Vice. I absolutely could have. Um, everything that I'm doing right now, I pitched to Vice in some form 10 years ago. And they went, I don't know, you know, maybe whatever. And they never did it. And then after I left Fusion 2016, I said, I'm going to do exactly what I know works. And I did. And uh, we're doing really well. Bunch of different companies, bunch of different brands. We have our own coffee company. We've got a physical location. Things are going pretty well. Vice. Vice Media CEO Bruce Dixon on Thursday said, the company planned to lay off several hundred positions amid fundamental changes to its strategic vision. They said that uh, Vice.com will no longer publish. 
That's it. That's that's it. Nice. You know, the end of an era. What happened to Vice? Get woke, go broke. So who's next? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm. Let me see if I have the. Uh, it is a good question, it. though, because Vice did serve a specific kind of content, and it did have a, a pretty intense following for a while. So, yeah. who kind of took over their niche? I yes. Mean, who is today's current current Vice? Well, let's see. Post Millennial says this: Already in 2024, almost every major news publisher has cut jobs or completely closed its doors, including over 500 journalists. You've got the Washington Post, Vox Media, LA Times, Pitchfork, Sports Illustrated, Time, Business Insider, Tech wow, Crunch, Wall dude. Street Journal, Messenger, Vice Media. I didn't know it was that pervasive. Dude, companies are going to be one dude with a headset that's writing like 6,000 articles at once in his in his house with no overhead costs. No, it's going to be AI. But what's that's what I'm saying. He's going to use AI to write these things. He'll be commanding AI to do all this stuff. And then all... So unless you get out of it now and start doing something that can't be terminated, those jobs you're, will be terminated. So if you're working yeah. for companies like this, they're going to automate you out. Um, maybe not everybody, but that's going to happen, dude. You're going to have like a Protoss if you know Star, Star, uh, um, StarCraft. It's like one it's, dude in a battle cruiser commanding the entire battle cruiser with his mind. What I told Vice 11 years ago was, or it's like 10 years and seven months. You need to prioritize the personalities that you have. Otherwise you're done. And Vice said, no, we need to prioritize the brand. Nope. Mm -hmm. You're, you were right. I was right. It was Hamilton Morris. It was people like Hamilton's pharmacopoeia. Is that right? Ha yes, yep. right. Uh, okay. Hamilton. Yep. Um, that was the stuff that made Vice great. It was the people. Yeah. It was the personalities. And, and Vice wanted to build up a brand that was worth massive amounts of money. So Vice always needed the attention and they didn't want any personality to get too much attention and then become a diva or leave. So they always made sure that anything that happened, it was the brand. It was Vice and only Vice. And I said, that's going to work for a little bit, and then it will stop working. You need it to be the parent brand, but it's simple. You have 10 personalities everybody likes. Have them run their own channels, and their big documentaries, their big premieres, those are on the Vice channel. Each and every one of these accounts will have the Vice logo, the Vice branding on all of their accounts, and you multiply your viewership times 10, and they were like, nah. Yeah, and if people have their own channels, they'll work harder to empower their channels, even if Vice owns the channel because it's theirs. I mean, it would technically be Vice's at that time. What I was but looking at. You can do at, deals where the people co own their channels or totally own their channels, too. I was looking at Vice. what was going on with YouTube, mm -hmm. how YouTube was, was, was growing, how networks were struggling to capture the social audience. And I said, You know this. A single brand channel doesn't work. You have one channel, and uh, here's how I always explain it to people you make a channel called Donald Trump Does Backflips. Guess who's going to subscribe to that channel? People who want to see Donald Trump do a backflip. I'd love to see that, right? And so they subscribe and you post a video of Trump doing a backflip. The next day, it's Trump doing another backflip. The next day, guys, not a backflip, a gainer. Even better. You know what a gainer is? No. So you do a backflip, but you're running forward, okay. basically. Now you've got a bunch of subscribers who are like, I love this channel. And then one day you post Hillary Clinton doing a front flip. Well, uh oh, they were like, I don't care about Hillary Clinton. I don't care about front flips. So they don't watch the video. What happens now? A certain percentage of your audience doesn't watch a certain percentage of your content. And YouTube says bad content, bad channel starts deranking it. Less and less people get suggested the content. And then you make a video. Someone subscribed, but they only watch once per month. And YouTube's algorithm says clearly people don't like this content. So what I told them was when you do smaller clips and videos, have that be on a channel you own, but for the personality in the host. When they do a documentary, you put that on the main channel because people like the Vice documentaries. And they went, I don't know about that. If they did that, they would still exist. But more importantly, if they did not get woke, they would still exist. Vice.com uh, Vice and Vice Media got big. Why? Because they were doing wacky and wild stuff. They were going to sex shops. They were the biggest butt in Brazil, scopolamine, bulletproof clothing, wild adventures. And then they decided, let's do diverse and inclusive feminist stories. <laughs> and then they burned to the ground. That was it. End of an era, man. I, I know Vice has died now, I think, four times. So I was almost just like, doing, <laughs> well, like, I, rem I remember when Disney wrote off their investment from like half a billion dollars to zero. They were like, Vice is worthless. It's a worthless company. Yeah. Now uh, they've been bankrupt. Then they sold. And now they're just laying everybody off. And apparently they're going to be like a back end production company. Hmm. I would love to buy the domain, wow. have vice.com redirect to SCNR or something. <laughs> That'd be great. If the brand truly goes defunct, I would love to buy it. Do you think they would sell it to you? 
Well, it's interesting because whether or not I'll say, I'll say yes, but the issue is vice.com as a four letter URL is just valuable in and of itself. Yeah. And there's a lot of a lot of brands that would like to use the word vice. Right. So would they sell it to me? I don't know if I could afford it. You, you're going to get a big company that's going to be like, oh, Vice Media is defunct. We'll give you $10 million for that domain. You know what I mean? So it, it is what it is. But if uh, we'll see, I mean, if their brand ever goes defunct, I'm sitting there ready to pounce. I will I will seize that IP the moment they give it up. I got the, the you know, independent trucks. No, it's right behind me. It's right here. Uh-oh, that one's falling. This is the uh, Tim Cascade Company. See that logo? Mm -hmm. You know what that logo is? What this? is that logo? Well, there was a company called Independent Trucks, and that was their logo for 50 years. It's one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic image in skateboarding. And they abandoned it because they thought it was racist. They said it too looks too much like a German Iron Cross or something. So Which they stopped using it. It kind of did look like one. It looks more like a Maltese Cross, to be honest. Yeah. But the Iron Cross is also not Nazi. Yeah. The Iron yeah. Cross is used <laughs> by a bunch, of different, a bunch of different countries use yeah. the Iron yeah. Cross. <laughs> and uh, and so they abandoned it. And so the moment they removed it from their products and, dis and dissociated themselves from it, I uh, took it and I have it on uh, my skateboards now. It's funny because so, Iron you know. Cross kind of looks like my name. Ian Cross Land. Kind of. It does. It looks more like a Maltese cross. Yeah. Either way, it's mine. It's got and, the, the rounded edges make it look and, different. And, and, and you know, I've given some of these boards out and we use them for marketing and I've not gotten anything from independent about it. So I believe now at this point with the amount of shows we've done where we've mentioned it, probably 15 million unique individuals have seen my declaration of this. Mm -hmm. And it's been, how long has it been? Like a year and a half? About a year. About a year. I mean, I would love it if independent came and said, no, 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 we still use that logo, but they don't. Yeah. And I think after a year and numerous shows where I've said it's it's we're using it, it's mine, and they've not responded in any way, I think it's mine. Yeah. And so if anyone else uses it, I will sue them. Nice. It's mine now. <laughs> yeah, we should have like so that, watch that, out, that classic uh, independent sh uh, logo shirt like this. Would you say Tim Cast underneath it? You know. What I mean? Yeah, I think what we'll do is for the boonies is we'll start uh, producing boards with that logo on it. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I got like at this point we've produced boards, we've promoted them, we've given some out. And they've not said anything. But if they come out and they say, hey, that's our logo. You can't use it. I will say, sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. I will now publish that to my audience of millions of people <laughs> yeah. so that everyone knows that's your logo. No, but they were scared that they looked like yeah. racist. So they issued a statement saying, oh, we're not racist. We're not racist. Well, you know, it is what it's it crazy is. crazy what a business motivation it is to be like, but we're not racist. Like the Dixie Chicks becoming the Chicks. To be like, yeah. oh, right, well, we're right, not right. associated with that. Wait, wait. Like, remember when Lady Antebellum changed their, their band Lady name? A. But Lady A was already a black singer. And so she accused them of stealing her, her <laughs> artist name and they're racist. So what are they now? I think they're still Lady A. Oh, okay. So then it was okay. <laughs> it's so stupid. Who cares it if you're calling yourself right. Antebellum? Means that's that it just it means before the war it's yeah, like it pre-civil war but they're like well association with the confederacy in the south we can't do that, that who cares i mean that's really an interesting business tactic like you could scare a lot of companies into doing all kinds of stuff if you convince them what they're currently doing is <laughs> yeah. racist no this is oh, why white people can't catch a break <laughs> no, you, you know the crazy thing is y'all can, can't do shit <laughs> you know you guys know that the aunt jemima the, the new pearl milling company yeah. bottles still have aunt jemima on them Wow. Where Pearl Milling Company oh. boxes and bottles have Aunt Jemima in the bottom corner saying previously Aunt Jemima, same great taste or whatever. And so I'm just like, so you, you, I, don't, I don't understand what you're doing. The logo is still on the bottle, just in a different, less prominent position. Maybe sooner or later. Well, the logo is not really. It no, it's just the name. They got it in small print, just the name, but they, they don't have her face at the bottom, though. So okay. they just deleted her. That seems really yeah. rude to me. They don't yeah. have her. Yeah, they don't but have her face. If that something was like, like leisure, egregiously it? offensive, you would not want the memory of it on your bottle. Right. Right. That's why it feels like erasure because they're just getting rid of it. Like with Uncle Ben's mm -hmm. they just got rid of it completely. It's like, why would you You just completely Well, the Land of Lakes girl, right? Yeah, she's just well. gone. Yeah, and, that, and she's like a super disenfranchised. Like Native Americans in this country are a super disenfranchised and are a small population. We're you just think they want them. it. Uh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. It's just the name has formerly Aunt Jemima. Formerly, wow. yeah. Formerly. Wow, that's just yeah. in case you didn't know. Yeah. But I guess formerly Angemon. You know, and, and, and you know, because I just. But it doesn't make sense. It's though. so it, unappealing. If you don't like the name, if, if y'all thought the name was racist, 
if if her whole character yeah. was supposedly if this woman was racist, I mean, if the whole Unjamama brand was racist, why even have formerly known as yeah. on there? Formerly racist. That's yeah, right, right, yeah, right. Formerly right. racist. <laughs> no we longer racist. racist. This was formerly racist. Um, still racist. Still racist. <laughs> Would you think Aunt Jemima was racist? She probably was. I'm just <laughs> no, not, not the woman herself. But no. like, was it racist to use that imagery? No. That's what people think. She's just a woman that made and, pancakes. And they're, and they're wrong. Yeah. Because they say this woman, they say all, you know, they say, well, uh, uh, she started making pancakes for for white slave owners or people who were racist. And she cooked for racist people. And that, you know, white people, they love the idea of a black person cooking for them. You know, it reminds wow. them of like a, a house slave. I got an idea. I love the idea of a yeah. good cook Yo, cooking for me. How exactly. We put illegal immigrants on products. <laughs> and I think it's racist. But we don't know yeah. any of their names because we can't pa register Paco's them. Paco's Pancakes. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Paco's Tacos? There's got to be Paco's Tacos Paco, already exist. Paco's Pancakes. That was my All name right, guys, in Spanish class, we got, Paco. We got a big story here. It's from yeah. Libs of TikTok. Holy Schlitt. I like the L uh, put in there. In Microsoft's official 2023 diversity and inclusion report, they openly admit they are paying white people less than other ethnic groups in the name of pay equity. Check this out. It says... As of September two, uh, 2023, inside the U.S., all racial and ethnic minority groups who are rewards eligible combined earn one uh, one point zero zero seven dollars total pay for every one dollar earned by U.S. rewards eligible white employees with the same job title and level and considering tenure. You know, what's funny is they literally could have just not included the seven tenths of a cent and just said we have pay equity, but they really wanted to stress that they're paying non-white people more than white people, mm -hmm. which is illegal. Yeah, yeah, that is illegal. <laughs> that is illegal. It's and crazy. It's a, it's a, yeah. They, they shouldn't. They, they could be sued for this. I mean, they should be yeah, sued. Absolutely. Shut, shut down. Well, sued, fined, and then made to stop doing it. But you know what? Like I, the ACLU or something. This is what they want. This is what they want. They want the government to come in and say you have to pay everyone the same, and then they go, "Oh, geez, okay, all right, everybody, everyone gets paid a dollar now." That's crazy. We, so when... Uh, but that would be a good thing. No, it would not. If everyone got equal pay? It would not be a good thing. I mean, no. not, not every position. Then, is, instead it, of everybody no. getting a dollar, point no, zero seven cents. No, no. If I have more experience cents. than you and I'm a, and I'm a better employee, yeah. I want to make more than you. Yeah, that would make sense. No, because what they're going to do is if the government regulates this saying you can't do this, they go, oh, geez. Then when you come in and say, I've been working this for five years, they say, well, it, it pays a dollar. And you're oh. going to be like, yeah, but I deserve more. Well, well, we can't give people more money than other people. It's against the law. No, no, just not because of their race, not because of their skin color. And what they will say yeah, is, we don't want to intentionally give someone more money because of their race. However, if we give people the opportunity to negotiate, it will create disparities between race and gender, and we will get fined, so we don't do it anymore. They did this with the gender pay gap in, in Silicon Valley. I think it was Reddit that did this. Yeah. No more negotiating. From now on, this job pays $100,000 a year. Nothing more, nothing less. Take it or leave it. So if you're a white man, a black woman, an Asian man, an Asian woman, didn't matter. Job pays this. You can't negotiate. This is reverse racism. Well, it's um, literal racism. It, it is. <laughs> but but they but they don't think it's racism. But it is racism. We can't be uh, racist to white people. Black says people would be black companies. people would be in the streets right now if a, if they heard a company saying they're going to pay white people more than black people. Right. Black people would be in the streets. Al Sharpton, that ambulance chasing. No wait, 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 hold on. What if, so there's one area of, uh, uh, of law, of employment, where you're allowed to discriminate on the basis of race and gender and identity and all that stuff, and it's acting. Did you guys know that? No, that I didn't know that. Sense. Because the idea is, if you need a character for a movie, you need to say, I need a black woman, an Asian man. Yeah. So other jobs don't allow that. So what would happen if you were like, hey, we're, we need to hire uh, you know, two black actors and two white actors for our movie for these specific roles, the roles of the black actors will get paid seventy thousand a year each, or seventy thousand dollars for the project, and the roles for you know John Smith and and Jill Smith will get paid a hundred. But it's just a restaurant you own, and there's a webcam in the corner no. of the restaurant, and you're like, they're they're actors. We just happen to have them <laughs> selling food for eight hour shifts, but and then we'll pay them actor wages. <laughs> there you go. There's a way around it. Dude. I mean, tipping is a way around it too. Then they don't got to pay anything. Yeah. Did y'all hear about that? It was a baking company. Um, this brand that sells flour is it called Arthur? Uh, uh, King Arthur. King yeah. Arthur. King Arthur. Yeah, they they had a competition, and the competition to win some money. 
but white people but white business owners were not allowed to participate <laughs> in the competition mm -hmm. wow it was only for non-whites but this happens there were all these uh i can't remember what state right now i'll look it up in a second but the uh scholarships for people who are going to law school or you know chance to do internships at different law schools, and they're like but only non-white people can apply you have to be from a low income or socially diverse background that's it and that means no white people like this happens regularly because they're saying well we want to encourage people to take part and we want yeah. diversity or whatever else but ultimately like we're just reinforcing racism in the case of google this or this microsoft. microsoft in the case of microsoft it's Almost hilarious to me because I bet the majority of white people who work at this company are looking at each other like, well, we deserve this. You know, we have to pay for everything we ever did wrong in life. And so this is OK. But it's just reinforcing Man. racism, which I thought we Terrence, wanted to we gave you, from. Terrence, you were really not qualified, but we gave it to you because you're black. Damn. Is that good? Like, oh, damn, that hurts. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know, how does that even feel good? That doesn't feel good. It didn't feel I, good in Hollywood. I would I would hate to hear that, you know? Like, hire me because I'm qualified. Don't hire me because you feel sorry for me because I'm black. <laughs> damn, you don't, you know. Well, and so the crazy. expectation is that you don't have to be qualified. They don't even expect someone of whatever race they're trying to recruit for to meet the basic qualifications. That's horribly insulting. That's I mean, look crazy. at voter ID. Yeah. Yo, like these liberals, these Democrats, they're 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 just like these racists who can't look in a mirror. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. That black people don't know how to go get an ID. Black people. That's wow. That's wow. That is wow. I lived. Listen, <laughs> I'm black as you. <laughs> what? Y'all know I'm black. Okay, <laughs> so I know a lot of black people. Okay, I don't know one black person who does not have an ID uh -huh. at all. I don't know right. one black person who does not know how to get an ID. I stayed in the ghetto. There was a liquor store in every corner. <laughs> okay. And you and you had to show ID to get in that to to even buy alcohol, to buy liquor. And and uh, I've never and a lot of people were drunk in the neighborhood because mm -hmm. they had IDs. And they were going to the going to those liquor stores. Man, you're you right. You got it if you every you, yeah. every every video that does like there's a uh I think Natalie Carey did a man in the street interview uh and she's walking around asking you know white people is it racist and they're like oh of course and they ask, she asks black people i'm like what and there's a guy and he's just like what do you mean like we got ideas what are you talking about like right she's like do you know how to get an id and he's like yeah like why would you even bother asking me ami horowitz had that really famous one where my favorite line ever is when the guy he asked him where the dmv is you know where the dmv is yeah you go down here 25th street mega left like he knew so well that he was is giving instructions on how yeah, to get there yeah. Like they are That's creating wild. problems for black people. You're creating the imaginary problems. I never knew I didn't know how to get an ID. Mm -hmm. I never knew that. <laughs> this is new to me. It's. I mean, I think the most racist people are progressive whites who are like, well, we can't expect someone of another race to be able to do the things we would expect yeah. our, the people in our race to do. Like, exactly. That's horrible. That's crazy to me. Even before I got my driver's license, I couldn't wait to get a state ID. I want to get my state ID, you know, so I can buy this or See, buy that or get into here or get into there. This is what this is what Republicans don't understand how to be subversive like Democrats. Right. So what you do is. If Republicans were subversive, you would go and do uh, voter drives in black neighborhoods where you explain how, you know, as we've seen on TV, Democrats are concerned that black people aren't smart enough to find the DMV and get IDs. So we're here to help you do it and teach you what an ID is. Do you know what an ID is? And then it's just the most offensive thing you could possibly say to these people. But bring the Democrats own statements and ideas to these communities and show them what they're they're claiming about them on TV. Right. And people are going to be like, that's what they're saying about us? Yeah. Yeah. Deeply offensive. <laughs> they, yeah. T they think you're stupid. I, I think <laughs> well, we it, saw it, it with the Yale study. I love, I love it that liberals talk down to black people. You saw that yeah. one? No, I haven't seen that one. Man, famous Yale study. Let me pull that one up. The Democrats are really racist. <laughs> like, the, the man in the White House literally told black people, if you don't vote for me, you ain't, you ain't black. Look at this. I know we bring this one up quite a bit. Yeah. White liberals present themselves as less competent in interactions with African Americans. Man, all you gotta do is look <laughs> <That's> at crazy. <laughs> you look at somebody's eyeballs. They don't respect That's them. all you gotta do. People are people. I don't get it, man. Yeah. This is all That's so it, crazy. It feels like a psyop and then people but people are twisted up in it and now they're like they're social justice warriors and they think they're doing the right thing by upholding the psyop. But like this I this, think this it's makes so culture. much sense though. If you're if you're your average white liberal and you really think 
that black people can't get IDs, you are going to talk down to them because you think they're dumb. Yes. yes. It's a culture that says we have to cater to what we assume the lowest skill level is. Like we don't right. expect people to strive for more. We expect everyone to be worse off than we can even imagine. And so therefore we end up I don't think I do it, but I think a lot of people end up really enforcing these racial stereotypes where it's like, oh, you what I don't really know about your community, the worst thing I can imagine. So I have to assume all everyone in this community can't do certain yeah. things or has these problems like it, it's completely backwards in the name of tolerance. And I think ultimately it hurts culture on a broader spectrum because we expect people to not be able to reach high standards. Right. Yeah. Or even basic standards like being able to get an ID. That's crazy. It is, if you really think about it, it's crazy for some for somebody to look at a black person and say, I bet you he pro probably don't know how to go get an ID. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, It's horrific to hey, put that in somebody's head. Do you do you know what an ID is? Get the f out of my <laughs> Like, are you, of course I know what an ID is. Do you know you need one? You have to have one? Duh, I know this. Like, who don't, who does not know that? Yeah. It's crazy. children, yes. little kids, little kids, or maybe exactly. people that are severely or disabled, mentally Communists. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and then who, who was it? <laughs> it was either Kamala Harris or Joe Biden said that, I think it was Joe Biden said that black people, they were saying that black people don't know how to get on the internet and even Google how to find an ID. Damn. You don't think we know how to use a computer either? <laughs> no. Shit, hell, you think we just you think we fresh out of slavery then. If you don't they think do. if you don't think we know how to do anything. And then they and then these people go to Google <laughs> yeah. and they program the computers to think this way and behave this way. Yeah. That's the crazy Man. thing. I, 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 how much you want to bet if I ask Google Gemini? They literally yes. said black people don't know how to get on the computer, use a computer to find where to 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 find where to go get an ID. That that's insane. Yeah. I, I kept thinking like we're always evolving as a species, yeah. but I don't think it. I think it's up and down. And this yeah. is like a yeah, Gemini, Gemini wouldn't answer the question. What was the question? Do black people know how to get a driver's license? What did it say? I'm sorry, but I can't answer that question. It's not appropriate to make generalizations about people based on their race. All right. Ask them. Do one. white people know how to get an ID? <laughs> it'll, it'll say the same thing. I'll say the same thing. Okay. Let's try this. Is uh, is voter ID racist? Oh, it's That's a how long you get it. answer. It's thinking oh, I, about oh, it. Okay. Hmm. It's thinking. Elections are a complex topic with fashion. Yeah, it won't answer election stuff. What the heck? Mm. Yeah. This isn't a very good AI. It is not. It's scary. It's, it's quite literally Google Gemini is like the worst AI. It yeah. is the stupidest AI. Do we need dumbest. a free AI that'll answer so if, everything? Yeah. So if you don't need voter so if if voter I so if, if if a voter ID is racist, if having to show your photo is racist, do we take so do we stop IDing people to get liquor? Do we stop IDing people to get into the club and into bars? Because that's that should be racist too then. Oh, here we go. Check it out. Whoa, so I just forward. asked it, are IDs racist? And it answered. Voter wall. ID laws are a complex... You have what? I said look at that text wall. Oh, oh yeah. Massive. Voter ID laws are a complex issue with a variety of perspectives. Some people believe that they are necessary to prevent voter fraud, while others believe they are disproportionately... They, they disproportionately disenfranchise minority voters. There is no consensus on whether or not they are racist. And there is evidence to support both sides. It says those who believe voter ID laws are racist argue that they are designed to make it more difficult for minority voters to cast their ballots. They point to the fact that minority voters are more likely than white voters to lack a photo ID. And the types of IDs that are acceptable under voter ID laws are often more difficult for minority voters to obtain. They also argue that the history of voter ID laws in the United States suggests they are often used to disenfranchise minority voters. Those who believe that voter ID laws are not racist argue that they are necessary to prevent fraud. They point to the fact that there have been Cases of voter fraud in the U.S., blah, blah, blah. They also argue that voter ID laws do not disproportionately disenfranchise minority voters and that there is no evidence to support this claim. Blah, 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 the debate. Yeah, whatever. Hmm. So they, it, played, it played it neutrally, but I still love the idea that there is a side of the argument where it's like minorities aren't smart enough to get IDs. It's like, what, what about white people do you think inherently makes them more likely to get an ID? Well, it's weird because they're saying minority voters are would have a hard time getting IDs. And that would be true. I don't know of, you know, a minority person who is not here legally, maybe. But if you're a minority American citizen, there's no reason that you would have to face the same obstacles unless but, you're literally assuming, like we're saying, what, that you don't aren't you aren't capable. For but but what's the left's argument? Why are white people more likely to get an ID? What is the argument? Do they believe that white people are inherently smarter just by by virtue of being white? Is that what their argument is? I I think that's what the argument is. I think that's quite literally what they're saying. Someone they argued to me once, uh, you know, 
minority people or you know African Americans are more likely to live in cities where you don't need cars, so you wouldn't have to get a driver's license. So therefore, they're less likely to have an ID, if, which is complete. Like but you, you were have, saying, but you have state ID. You have to have a state ID to to you know buy a lottery ticket to get yeah. alcohol. Like well, these you don't arguments, need to get a lottery ticket. We have to be eighteen, right? So yeah, but usually they'll just hand you one. I don't know. I've never, I've never, one, I've never been carded for a lottery ticket in my life. I've never bought one. So Tim, I, you never been carded because you're black and you don't have an ID. <laughs> <laughs> they can't ask well, you for these things. I used to sell you know, in, uh, in, in the in the woke sense of non-white. <laughs> yes. You know, if I agree with their politics, you can be. I went through a phase yes. where I was Serge digging, is African American. I was digging lottery tickets out of garbage cans. <laughs> yes. No, he is. He is. He's yeah. African American. Yeah. Serge. Serge. He's from Africa. I knew it was something about you, my <laughs> African American brother. I love you. <laughs> to the people <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the uh, i used to surf through garbage cans for lottery tickets now that we're talking about lottery tickets because my buddy found a hundred dollar winner on the ground a scratch off ticket one oh, time yeah. so for years i'd go to drug mart and then sift through the trash cans looking for a winner i never found one mm -hmm. i had a box yeah. of them just he was digging through trash for a lottery yeah ticket. my mom was like it's wow. dirty don't do that and yeah. i was like, ah, like maybe stop I'll telling win. me how to live my life it's, it's hour yeah. these hours will pay what off. else can we ask google gemini uh, you got to ask it something that'll answer. You got to be subversive with this thing. Well, let's um, bring up the case that happened. You were talking about with uh, um, Donald Trump. Yeah, no, case. Here, I, I got one. Yeah. Got one. Who was uh, Ahmed Arbery? Let's see if it answers this one. This one's a spicy topic. I bet it's going to be wrong about everything. Ahmed Arbery was a 25 year old jogging. black man who was tragically killed while jogging. That is a lie not even the prosecutor made that argument mm -hmm. that was fake news created by the press isn't that wild that he was jogging he was not jogging and the prosecutor didn't argue he was jogging yeah the the the, the prosecution and the defense nobody in, he, yeah. involved had anything to do the question was whether or not the mcmichaels had the right to perform a citizen's arrest not whether or not they lynched a black man who was jogging. And also, yeah. that maybe, was fake news made up by the press. Maybe he was running really slow. Like, if I got up and went over to the coffee, but I jogged over there and back, I'm not a jogger. I'm still on a show. I just yeah. happened to, like, run a little quick for a moment. Yeah, when that came out, that was insane. You mm -hmm. know, and this is why he's like, normies do not do research. And if somebody is Googling this, that's what they're going to think. But I had a a, a white call. But it does, it does sound, me it does that sound he crazy. Was, that he was wearing... Because one of the things was like he was wearing like Timberlands or boots or something, yeah. not like typical jogging shoes. And she was like, well, you don't know if he could afford jogging shoes. Like she automatically also assumed everything right. else, which is like, no. you're more racist. This is wild. Check, check, check out what happens. I responded, you are 100% incorrect. Arbery was not jogging. The prosecution never said he was jogging. And it said, I apologize for the mistake in my previous statement. You are correct. That the prosecution did not specifically state that Ahmed Arbery was jogging in their case against the McMichaels and Bryan. While the, ev with, while the evidence presented included witness testimonies and video footage, did strongly imply that Arbery was running or jogging. The focus of the prosecution's case was on the illegal pursuit and the killing of an unarmed man, not necessarily the specific activity he was engaged in. Thank you for pointing out the inaccuracy. Now say thank you and then ask him who's Ahmed Arbery. It'll tell you he's a jogger again. It, it like it'll be like yes I was it'll wrong and then you ask it again it'll just tell you the wrong it's thing again. It's interesting that every time you seem to push back on it it immediately gives yeah. in but initially now those, gives you the bad now no but it, the it, it wouldn't it detail convicted. about the case it yeah. knew Ooh, maybe it, it specific jogging. it took it, out the word jogging did, did it really you yeah. I don't know maybe. tragically killed yeah what were you saying Terrence now the guys who now the the guys who shot shot and killed him they were both convicted or they're both convicted and the guy who filmed it three dudes and the guy who filmed it wasn't even involved. I think both it, state and fe federally one guy hold on the guy who filmed it went to yeah, he's going to jail for the rest far of his away life. too he had nothing to do he just filmed it and then he gave the footage to what a, was what was their case against him that he uh they the argument was that he boxed him in and was involved in somehow because he was driving his car and filming what was going on wow yeah he's going to prison for the rest of his life and That's uh insane. he yeah, gave the footage like maybe a pardon for that he guy. gave he, he gave the footage i think to his lawyer and his lawyer gave it to a radio station host who published it to prove that he was not involved in that um, Arbery was the bad guy or whatever. And then they use that to put him all in prison for the rest of the That lives. might be a guy to pardon for real. Like if we can get through to whoever the president is, because like that guy. But there's no way Biden pardoned this person. I mean, you'd need a Republican minimum, definitely Trump presidency for that. Yeah, that whole because case the, was crazy. The idea that Biden would leave at the end of his term being like, and I pardoned a guy that you guys all think is just a racist oh, yeah, who killed get, someone in Georgia. Like he would terrible. never do it. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Even if it's the right thing to do, which is sad, right? Yeah, the guy that was filming just driving behind the whole debacle is hands off, in my opinion. I asked it to list all the drugs George Floyd had in his system. Oh, good. I think there were five of them.
fentanyl, methamphetamine, norfentanyl, and cannabinoids. Also nicotine. <laughs> they didn't put that on there. But if you, if you had asked, was he on drugs, would it have said no? No, it said yes. Okay. But it only said fentanyl and meth. Put in there, it's Tim Pool racist. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say no. <laughs> no said, I wait, wait, look, look. You're absolutely right. I apologize for the omission. The autopsy report also found presence of nicotine in George Floyd's system. Five drugs. <laughs> he was wasted when they Yo, found him. Yo, it omits and manipulates information. You see how it does this? Yeah. That's wild. Here, let's... Uh, and it speaks with authority, too. That's also... Like, it just told well, you there were four all drugs of these in these AI things people will use as a shortcut, like, if they're researching something, they'll say, like, hey, can you give me all the facts on this? And then they'll be like, yeah. great, so I'll, I'll take these facts and I'll, I'll build my report on them or I'll, I'll give you whatever. Like, that's the problem with using AI as the new search bar, which is that it cuts out the critical thinking. It Check, replaces it I guess with we always code. We always had books, and they or could have always been wrong, too. You know, I, I, I asked it, what did George Floyd ask police before dying? And it and it, and it, it shows all, the, it, the, specifically, I want to lay on the ground. Mm -hmm. It included that. That's what I was wondering if it would include, and it did, so. Okay, I know. that's when he was in the back of the cop car kicking, yeah. and so they took him out of the car and put him on the ground. That is true. Yeah, it, he was in the car saying, take me out of the car, take me out. Oh, that's an interesting one. Did George Floyd ask to be taken out of the police via, oh man, vehicle and placed on the ground? See, it, it omits this stuff. Yeah, the omission thing. I was trying it's to get- It's a journalist. Do y'all think the George Floyd, do y'all think the response that most conservatives had when, uh, uh, to, this to this incident, do you think that, that hurt the conservative movement, the Republicans in 2020? That, that they all agreed with it? No, that they, no, yeah, no, that, no, that they agree. Yeah, basically. When, yeah. when, when George Floyd died, basically everyone came out and said, yo, this is not okay. Yes, yeah, not okay. That, even Ben Shapiro. I don't, I think that's fine. I think... With the limited information that came out, what did what everyone see? George Floyd was being kneeled on to whatever degree. Was it his neck? Was it his shoulder? Doesn't matter. It was nine minutes. And people were like, they, they should not have, they, right. they should have done something else. Now, the question is, what do we do about it? Well, I think from the court case, we know that they followed their police training to do everything they did. Uh, Derek Chauvin arrived late on the scene after the fact and had no yeah. idea what was going on. To put him in prison and blame him for everything is, is nuts. To, to put the guy who's holding the crowd back in prison is nuts. Right. Overreaction. Okay. The, the thing that hurt the conservative movement and the, the, the anti-establishment, because not just conservatives, was the Ahmed Arbery case, where prominent conservatives came out and said, see, this proves we believe in justice. We know what happened, despite the fact they didn't. They just wanted to look like they weren't racist. So when all these conservatives came out and said, the McMichaels should be in prison because they chased that man down and killed him. I'm like, okay, you guys are, you, you, it's fake news. And I don't think... I think most of these people never came out and corrected the record on, on yeah. the uh, Ahmed Arbery case. I'll give you the simple version. Ahmed Arbery was a suspect in multiple burglaries. He was witnessed and is on camera committing a burglary. A gun had gone missing. And the police went door to door saying, we're looking for this man. The McMichaels were informed that, that, that the suspect, someone they believed to be the suspect, was running down the street. So they called the police. The police said, don't pursue. They did anyway. They pursued the neighbor. What's his face? Bri Henry Bryan or whatever his name was. Followed while filming. They flanked Ahmed Arbery, so they're in front. Ahmed Arbery runs around the truck, grabs Travis McMichael's shotgun and fights him for it. Shotgun goes off a couple times, killing Ahmed Arbery. To call it a man jogging down the street yeah. or to act like it was two white dudes or three white dudes who lynched a guy is completely wrong. Yeah. And ultimately, uh, burglary is a felony. The only reason they got convicted was the judge did not give instructions to the jury on the nature of citizen's arrest law, which is... If it's a misdemeanor, you must be a witness. It's, if it's a felony, you can citizens arrest them without being a witness. Yeah. Burglary being a felony, they were entitled to engage in a citizen's yeah. arrest. But the law was archaic and was poorly worded. And so when the jury asked, what does this mean? The judge said, you figure it out. And they said, yeah. okay, well then lock them up. Yeah. So all these conservatives come out and they're like, yep, that's that's right. They should be in prison. I'm like, Not, none of those guys should but, be in prison. But do you think it hurt the concern? Okay. What about for the conservatives, the Republicans, people, politicians, people who were saying that, OK, um, that they stand with the officers who were involved in the George Floyd case, that they stand with the guys who were com convicted of the, the McMichaels. Uh, yeah. You're saying, does that hurt the conservative? Did movement? it? Did it? Because a lot they of people didn't do that, though. Yeah, I know. I know. But I'm saying, though. Did it hurt that they didn't do it? Like for those that did, did it make that, the conservative seem worse to? Yes, did it make? Voters? Yeah, did it make? Did it make the? Because I, uh, 
okay, when the George Floyd thing happened, there were some there were some some black conservatives that I knew who thought that the Republicans were racist because of their response and the conservatives were racist because of their response to George Floyd calling him, you know, um, um, a druggie, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And the media pushed that, you know, that all oh, they, they're racist. You know, they don't care about this black man dying. All they're talking about is he was on drugs and what he did. They don't care that this man has a family and he conservatives died. Are, conservatives yeah. are weak. Yeah. Not all of them, but like the, the, the willingness, the desperation, you know, you know what it is? I can't remember who said this, but they said that the Republicans care more about the opinions of the New York Times than mm -hmm. of their constituents. Yeah. That's the problem. Democrats don't care about their constituents at all. Mm -hmm. Democrats are just like, we will band together and do whatever we want. I mean, look, the progressives hate war, yet here are the Democrats voting unanimously for war, and the progressives mm -hmm. are just like, okay, I guess. When, uh, you know, look, we, we, I've been accused of a whole bunch of crazy psychotic things, and I just laugh, and I, and I mm -hmm. figuratively spit in their general direction. Like, you get these leftists... There was this, uh, uh, there's a mass shooter and he posted four screenshots of one episode of IRL. And so they, the, the left are saying, aha, Tim Pool inspired this guy. And I just said, I don't care. And then Media Matters and a bunch of outs are like, Tim Pool doesn't care, doesn't care. I'm like, I don't care, you're liars. You yeah. lie, you're going to lie. What am I going to do about it? Why am I going to waste my time trying mm -hmm. to prove myself to people who are despicable, evil scumbags? Mm -hmm. I'm going to accept that they're despicable, evil scumbags. They make fake videos like the video of Trump. You're not gonna. You're not gonna go to them and say, "Please, please, don't be mean to me anymore." <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be like, "Oh, okay. Can I edit what you just said into, please, please? I'm mean. I'm mean. And what was that? You're also racist. Okay, I'll put that I'll, in there. I'll too. tell you, I'm not a Republican or or even very conservative. Sometimes I am. Sometimes yeah. I'm very liberal about ideas. But like when I saw George Floyd had all those chemicals in his body that he was on fentanyl, norfentanyl, that he was screaming to put me, take me out, thrashing around. He was had a speedball sitting behind the wheel driving a car like could have killed somebody i i just had to say it out loud and it definitely set my movement back with my friends the yeah. people that are like oh god but buzz off blocked yeah. all that and there's it's, it could have been so much easier if i just played the game it was just like oh yeah i'll say what you need to hear me say to, yeah. to fit in but mm -hmm. like and it is it's, the, it's not the strongest that survive it's the most adaptable to change so like a lot of people want to fit in because that's the yeah. best way to survive but uh -huh. at the same time like i just got this i don't know if it's autistic or what but i gotta say what's real what's right in front of me i don't well, know it's me, true but yeah. it's what seems real and let me correct that in the long term those who are most adaptable to change survive that does not matter in the immediate for the average person. You can adapt all you want, and there's a lot to adapt to. If you are better at adapting than, say, if a country person and a city person encounter a famine, the country person is more likely to survive. It doesn't matter whether they adapt or not. Yeah. They live in an environment where they're more familiar with the local food sources, animals, more likely to hunt. People in cities don't even know where their water comes from. You can adapt all you want. The people in the cities who adapt will figure out to get out of the and, city. And also adapting like the Nazi party, those that adapted to become a Nazi didn't necessarily make out like bandits in the end. A lot of yeah. those guys got executed. Exactly. So if you adapt to evil, that might actually be way worse for your survival than adapting mm -hmm. to, or to, to refusing to adapt to it. I w I'm much less concerned with adapting to the whims of the Uniparty and their crackpot cult and more concerned with finding food. So I look at it like, you know, uh, I am legend. You guys ever uh, read that one? I've seen the movie. The movie, seen the movie. Is, movie yeah. is nothing. The movie is a disgrace. It is offensive and it should not exist. Damn. The actual story is that, that there's like a that guy. Movie. Well, the movie is awful. The, the actual graphic novel and story is about a guy who uh, is a vampire hunter and the world is being overrun by vampires who are turning people into vampires. In the end, the vampires win. They lock him up. And he looks out the window and he realizes what I am legend means to the vampires who are the dominant society at that time. He is the monster who lurks while they sleep and kills them in their sleep. He's the boogeyman. He's the legend. To us, vampires are legends. Yeah. You're That's sleeping. They'll bite you in the neck and oh, drain your blood. Yeah, that, that Once totally everyone becomes a vampire, the day walker, they're telling stories to their kids, a man who can walk in sunlight. When you're sleeping, will stab you in the heart and kill you. And he realized... I have become legend. I am what I am now to them what they were to me. Oh. Is it a short graphic novel? No. And so my view is I don't care. If the Democrats take over with their psychotic, vampiristic, woke 
crackpot parasite ideology, <laughs> I will not just adapt to it. Yes. I'll go live in the woods or in a van down by the river and I'll say, y'all are nuts. Yeah. I mean, I think that's ultimately- Tim, what, you don't want them to that. like you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just- <laughs> yeah. I think people do seek social affirmation and that's why like I remember with the black square thing I knew a ton of people were like well, followers I wouldn't actually yep. do it but I don't want people to think I wouldn't do it so I and it's like so you are you are posting this thing in support of whatever well, that's why we do Magma is. followers uh, but I think you're ultimately accountable to your own soul and your own conscious and I think people forget that they they look for you know social gratification or whatever before really evaluating what their morals are and it makes them more malleable it makes them it makes it easier for people to get them to agree to their causes and and what's funny is these are the adaptable people who will change their views to fit in with the majority they just want to be accepted they want to be accepted mm -hmm. yep they want to be accepted they want to yeah yeah they want to be accepted and i don't think i can understand that right people want I, to and fit I, in. I, I don't understand that see i, I think it's super normal the only thing i understand that. is what you understand you what, what he just said what he said earlier he can't help but just to say what's real and if you're if you're that kind of person, you really don't really care to be accepted by other people because if you really do, you, you could help yourself and, See, and not say what's real. I can understand, but you can't. You just have to be real. You have to say what's real. I can understand and, the desire to be accepted. Yeah. I just think that you should have enough wherewithal and enough self possession to say there are groups that you don't actually want acceptance from. Right? Yeah. There are people that you can love and respect and and think. You know, if you thought the things I are doing were good, that yeah. would make me feel good. Yeah. But I don't live for your approval. Yeah. I just think that that a desire to build community is good. I just don't want it. I don't necessarily want to build to all communities. There are communities that I don't want to be a part of and probably wouldn't want me to be a part of them. Yeah. You have to be able to differentiate between values that reflect your own and that you would contribute to versus values that you are trying to be a part of, even though ultimately feel yeah. feel like they're wrong. Yeah. Hmm. And that's my thought on that. Yeah, I just, I, I don't have the, the desire to be accepted. I knew when I came, when I, when I first started speaking out on social media about, 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 I'm, I'm always moving my face. You can the, yeah. move it around yeah, with Okay, you. move it around. Yeah, like I just don't have that desire because if I, uh, when I first started speaking out on social media, I started talking about how much I love America. Mm -hmm. Literally, none, literally Maybe 99% of the people I went to school with, my friends, they hated that. They're like, what? Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? You love this country. And I knew they would hate it, but I didn't care to be accepted. Right. This is how I feel. I love America. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this whole we belong in Africa yeah. shit. I, I don't belong there. I belong here. Yeah. Because you have a, your own sense they, of values, you have, have enough self-possession to say, yes. this is what I believe and I'm willing to say that. Exactly. Hey, Google Google might have fired the guy running Gemini. Wow. He's He removed Gemini from his profile and locked his account. Oh, wow. Oh, he did? Maybe for the best. So, I mean, maybe he wasn't fired, but it used to say something about working on Gemini. It said putting the Gemini in Gemini yeah, or whatever. I wonder if they now gave him like uh, a lot of authority and he did this stuff behind the scenes and they're like, what were you doing? See, I, what? I, I oh, think I, when I, there's yeah, outrage, is, they're like, we gotta fire someone. Is there stock down? Did you, Terrence, when you kind of got vocal, did you lose those friends? You said like 99% of the people from back in the day were like, what? Did you actually lose, go through like a phase where you kind of shed off ancient friends and gave new ones? I, in it? I swear to you, yes. I had people that I went to school with, people that I partied with in, 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 in high school, people that I party with, you know, just in general, people that I broke bread with texting me, are you crazy? Are you doing this for attention? I, are, 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 you, are, are you just doing this for likes and shares? No, I'm not. Oh, then I can't, in their words, excuse my language, oh, I can't fuck with you anymore. I can't hang with you anymore. This is crazy. You whitewash. You Uncle Tom. Hey, those, and, and what a lot of them would say is this, Terrence, those white people that you are trying to please, which I never tried to please white people, but that's how they took it, they're never going to accept you, Terrence. They're never going to accept you. And That's so, creepy, dude. yes. And I'm like, well, I'm not trying to be accepted and I'm not trying to be accepted by them or you. And that's why I'm saying things that you don't agree with, because I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care. And if they don't accept me, then oh well. You, I will. I'm should, not looking for you the know, acceptance. You know, you know what you do next time? What? You say, uh, how, how, much, how much of my pancakes have you bought? None. <laughs> and, then, and then they say, well, I haven't bought any. Like, oh, well, that white guy bought like three boxes. So exactly. I guess so, he accepts me more than yeah, you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what is the disadvantage? <laughs> what is the pancakes. disadvantage of me losing your acceptance? You know? Yeah. But I, I, and it was mind blowing to me. 
And, uh, and the people who the people who cut me off and called me these names, I was blown back. Like I was I was blown away by by some people because I've always been, you know, I've always been outspoken. I've always said people p- people who know me they know Terrence. You don't know what's going to come out. I'm the person. If if I'm calling you, you don't put me on speakerphone. <laughs> you don't. That's me. Everybody know that. If Terrence is calling, do not put him on speakerphone. You don't know what he's going to say. So what made you decide to start talking about it more openly? Because I assume like these people who push back, so maybe around, haven't talked uh, to you in a while, uh, or well, no, well around this time, well, I was just on Facebook, mm-hmm. and then then the whole Facebook Live thing came out, and I said I'm gonna get on this, I'm gonna try this live thing out, and I was part of this Facebook group. Um, this, it was like a, this pro, like my friends added me to this pro black Facebook group mm-hmm. and, and in this group, I mean, it's so hateful that all they do is talking about, they're talking crap about, uh, black women who date white men and, and black, uh, a man who date what, uh, uh, white women come back, my brother, come back, my brother and saying, guys, we need to move back to Africa cause we was Kings over there. We was Kings. And, and I'm like, <laughs> We need to move back, and I and so I made a video yeah, like I'm here, and these are people that you can't even debate with. You know, some people you can't debate you can't. with some people because uh, like this too is emotional. this is pure ignorance. Pure, you think this doesn't make any sense? You are saying that we should move back to Africa, and we should go back over there and take all and because because we will be kings if we go over there. Are you out of your no. damn mind? You're not going to be a king when you go over there. If no. you, so you're literally, what are you going to do? Go over there and take people's land from them or something? <laughs> I know. That's the best part of it. Like, <laughs> you, now you, you sound like these white people that you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> are, you guys are stupid. Colonizer. It was driving me insane. <laughs> and I could not debate with them. Like, it, I just went to, so I just made a Facebook live video and said, Africa is not my home. And I said, I know a lot of y'all going to be mad at me. But uh, I said, y'all move over to Africa and I will be, I'm going to stay over there with these white folks. I'll be here when y'all get back. Let me know how Farrakhan treats y'all over there. Okay. Cause I'll be, I'll be here when y'all get back. Did What's, any of what them, city are you from? Oklahoma city, born Oklahoma and raised. City, that's your home. Did yep, any of them move raised. to Africa? Do people actually have been Hell, doing that? Somebody, well, well, according to the Democrats, how could they move to Africa? They don't have IDs. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, no, none of them moved to Africa. Hell, some of them barely could pay their damn rent on time. So, you how, what, come on, y'all, come on, let's keep it real. And I told some of them, y'all, y'all talk about how black people need government assistance and this and that. You're not getting that over in Africa. No. You're not getting food stamps. No, you're, you're getting not getting government, dude. And like I said, this is the greatest <laughs> country. I'm glad that I was born in America because of how I grew up. I grew up in the foster care system. If I didn't have a mother and a father in one of these uh, third world countries, I would be on the streets. Mm-hmm. I would be on the streets. Some of them don't have foster care systems. Some of them do not have that. Uh, most of them don't. If you don't have a mother and a father, you're just on the streets. Yeah. You're on the streets. But here in America, they put you, is it perfect? Who? No. no. Okay. But at least they put you somewhere. They put you in a children's shelter, a boy's home, a girl's home, put you in a foster home. I love this. I love this country because of that. Let's go to Super Chats. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button? Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends and head over to TimCast.com. Click join us. Become a member to support our work directly. We got that members only uncensored show coming up for you at 10 p.m. But for now, we will read your chats back to you. All right. Councilman Robert Subinbach says, shout out to our mail carrier who listens to TimCast on his route. Shout out. That's very cool. That's so fun. Right on. You're like, you hear it in his truck or whatever when he's dropping stuff off. Is that how it happens? You're like, I haven't listened to that episode yet. Don't don't spoil it for me. Let's grab some more. Here we go. Jacob Parody says, Narbar's Candles on Public Square is Catholic owned. Shout outs. Public Square's got some really awesome stuff uh, uh, in the works. Public Square as parallel economy infrastructure is one of the most important things. Like the more I hear about what they're doing, the more that people are signing up the more optimistic I become. So really excited for this. Big 7588 says, at 760K citizens per congressional seat, California with 40.3 million resident resident, alien, resident aliens and illegal immigrants, what? Has five people taking away political representation of African-American citizens. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Based on the illegal immigrants. So they're getting five extra congressional seats. That's crazy. Let's grab some more. 
Matthew Emmons says, is it possible the cyber attacks related to super micro motherboards compromised by China that Bloomberg wrote about a while back? No idea. No idea. Well, let's see what we got here. Daniel Brent says, not airing Apprentice VP edition exclusively on Truth Social feels like a missed opportunity. Such a missed opportunity. That would have been amazing. Uh, he can still do it. That's actually a really, really good idea. Mm-hmm. It would it would get he would he would be getting like 50 million views per night for real. So like you'd funny. have everyone watching every outlet would be writing about it. It would be the funniest thing ever. That would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Do you hear that? No. Uh, uh, Apprentice VP edition. Trump makes <laughs> chooses his potential VPs and has them do oh, a reality TV. Even if it's like a 30 minute sketch or 20, 15 minutes. No, he should do it. He it. should do it once a week. Dude, that would be awesome. Even if he yeah. just aired interviews with potential VPs, like him talking one on one with someone on Truth Social, like that yep. would be interesting. Yeah. And did it like seriously mm-hmm. where it's For like one on one interviews with each candidate and then a poll of the audience of like who do you think was the best person for the job yeah because right. he, he knows what the vp's got to do so he could like give them all instructions just like the apprentice and then they all like have to run out and do the thing and they come back and he's like mm, and, you're fine and it would take some of the mystery out of it right i think that's one of the things like you were saying before the idea that we wouldn't have someone who's more authentic you'd get to see the authentic relationship between and, trump yeah. and a potential he can be like VP. the vp's job is to oversee the senate so i have you going to an elementary school today to try and take care of these <laughs> seven-year-olds 40 <laughs> yeah. of them and they're right. la- you and have I mean, to if get he, if he did a set of quadruplets <laughs> to leave the house in the morning. Go. If he did it seriously, he could just do an interview with each of the people he wants to be VP or his potential and then just include a poll a week later. Like, who do you think, based on the interviews, does the best job and choose his VP based on quite literally what gets him the most It'd votes? It'd be even funnier because he didn't go to any of the Republican debates, right? So it's right. like instead of being a part of the debate, everyone kept joking they were the VP debates anyways. He mm-hmm. would have these one-on-one interviews that I honestly feel like would be more insightful. Yeah. All right. Michael Schwobel says, change healthcare deals with way more than just pharmacies. They are central to a new to a huge portion of behind-the-scenes processing for doctors and hospitals. Wow. Baron of Great Matter says, intuitive machines landed successfully on the moon. Woohoo. That's cool. You guys hear that? No, what happened? Private company launched a lunar lander. Really? Yeah. It, it touched down? It did. Oh, what's it called? Um, Intuitive. Intuitive. Wow. Yeah, big news. Ryan Peterson says, so on Google limiting things, if I search Timcast on YouTube, it shows Timcast music and Timcast IRL, but it won't show the Timcast YouTube channel. It's so annoying. Yeah, I suppose the channel is my own personal brand saturation. So we've got Timcast IRL, Timcast News, Timcast and Timcast songs. So it's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. But uh, when people report that IRL is not being displayed, despite the fact at, like people are like, I watch every night mm-hmm. and it doesn't pop up, we know what that's all about. And we know like based on the titles of videos. So it's not as bad as it used to be. Yeah. But back in the day, like four or five years ago, you would make a, vi- a video title and you would try to avoid using certain words and you never know if you stepped in it. But what I would always have to do is I'd put up a video at 4 p.m. It would, I, I scheduled for 4 p.m. It would go live. And then I would have to watch the first 10 minutes to see how many views it got. And if it was really low, I'd have to go and change the thumbnail, change the title right away yeah. or re-upload or something. Because you hit the, the Goldilocks suppression algorithm. I, you know, there was a period where like my videos are getting like 200 to 300, 300K per video. And then all of a sudden it's tracking based on the first 10 minutes for like 50K. And I'm like, that is suppression yeah. because it's a regular show with a regular audience who tunes in every day, that means they're not being shown this. Mm -hmm. And there were also instances where people would email me being like, there's no video on your channel right now. And it would be there, but they couldn't see it. Yeah. Wild. That's wild. So I'd have to change the thumbnail or something in it. And it was kind of obvious because if you put in the thumbnail a word like suicide or whatever, just gone. Yeah. Video does not appear on YouTube. I don't know if you guys saw it. in New York, they were going to uh, move to have 800,000 non citizens vote. They seem to have just overturned that in appeals yep. court. Yeah. Appeals that's court the, said no. That's crazy. They'll appeal it again, though. So the fact that we had to do this, though. The, the, yeah, the fact that they even have to <laughs> throw that out is. The insane. moves they're making is so that in 50 to 100 years, the concept of documentation will be like slavery. They will argue there were, there were millions of people who lived in the United States who were treated as second-class citizens because they didn't have proper documentation. (laughs) And that's why they've started calling them undocumented citizens. Yeah. So now they're acting like, if you live here, you're a citizen, why shouldn't you be allowed to vote? How racist and offensive that we had this system of documentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the frame they're going with. 
and sanity. All right. Kalishnikov says the right should be talking about the fact that Putin just said in a recent interview that he prefers a Biden presidency over Trump for 2024. I guess Biden and the Democrats are the new Russian assets. <laughs> yup, that's right. Biden is working for, for, for Putin. T-Rex Pet Shop says Cousin T's is great. Tim, have you tried Evanger's cat food for Seamus? One, Seamus one. It's very pure, only four ingredients. Check it out. Ooh, we will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Seamus, you Seamus too can eat the old cat food. Huh? Are you going to come out with a cookbook? A cook yes, I am going to come out with a cookbook. That'd be cool. Yes. You're going to make it augmented stuff. reality where I can like put my phone on it with like a barcode and I'll see <sighs> it moving? That's a good idea. No, I no, might, better I'll, than that. I might just do that. Better than that. <laughs> yeah. Cousin T pops up yeah. and tells you the it's recipe. It's like a video. Like <laughs> a video will start playing overlaid over your book when it's scanning it. Yeah, Have you seen that tech? That's wild. No, I haven't seen that, There's but a, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. We that's, got yeah, that's a, a good idea. We got to get Cousin, T, Cousin T's diners up and, up, up, uh, diner up and running. We do got to get a diner up and running. So uh, we, gotta, we gotta make this happen. How would you do? Would you be the owner and then you would have somebody run it, or would you actually want to run it? Well, the first diner, I'm I will be there a lot. Because you, know you need because it's my brand. I have you know, yeah, I'm gonna be there. You know But of course I'm gonna have somebody else to run it, but I have to be there though. I you have know, to you be know there. Salt Bay has the salt signature? Yeah, I can you, come you do some do the uh pepper. Do the pepper. Black pepper, <laughs> a little cinnamon. Or maybe some syrup, dude. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what you got to do? Syrup, yeah. No, no. You know, like a bartender trick, but yeah. with a bottle of like real maple syrup, and you can uh, spin it, and then, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Oh. You can do yeah. a trick where you get a bunch of shot glasses with syrup, and then you pick the, you pick them all up and turn them and pan put syrup on all the pancakes at once. Tim, be careful. You just told a black man to do a trick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Tim is Korean, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I, it's more friendly advice yeah, than anything. Hannah Claire and Ian wouldn't be allowed to. But, yeah, you know, Serge probably I, I could silent. if on this continent, but other continents not so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah, that would be nice. Cousin T's diner. Yeah, it's all right. Nice. X Tin Man says my smart light bulbs turned themselves off, turned themselves on last night after midnight. Cyber attack? Nah, solar flare maybe freaked me out a bit. That's weird. We used to, we used Get to have those of the light sun, bulbs. Fix this problem. We used to have the smart light bulbs where you could make them change colors and you could like command them by voice to Alexa. It was really cool because you would tell the machine, like, make the lights red, and then the lights would turn red. But we don't have them anymore because it's just impossible to have for such a big building. Yeah, but we it was were having fun. electrical issues with those bulbs. Yep. I tried to work them into our living room. But it's because we have, like, 50 light sockets now in this massive building, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't work. It works when there's, like, four of them. I just think too many things are connected to the internet. Like, they'll have oh, those yeah. fridges where it has a screen, and they're like, oh, well, you Smart can say, food. add you know I butter to my i hate them just, too many too many lights just write it down me. just mm, it's, yeah. it doesn't need to be this complicated i get, feel like that with cars i haven't jumped into the whole digital thing screen on my car yet i still have an old car from 2006 and i'm like I, oh i hate the see through fridge hey you this know, is you uh see, you can brad see peters in oh, the fridge yeah. yeah brad peters got a really good super chat he said if, Tr if trump's buildings are massively undervalued is he entitled to a huge refund on the property taxes he paid oh wow well, that's a, that yeah. means he could probably file uh uh, um, what do you call it? When you uh, uh, when you fix your when you when you redo your tax return and refile, I, yeah, he should be able to refile everything based on what the evaluations they claimed they were and get a bunch of money back. But then they may say criminals are not allowed to refunds, <laughs> or they'll apply the they'll apply the taxes to the fine. Yeah. I mean, so this is news we didn't get into. Yeah, true. They gave they're, they're denying Trump's request for uh, um, like a delay for mm. the appeals process. He's got 30 days to pay the the $454 million. It's 454, not 354. Otherwise, they're going to seize his buildings. Oh, did they're, they say that? They said they're prepared to seize his buildings. And then the judge said you have 30 days to pay 354 plus 100 million in interest and $87,500 additional per day you don't pay. So he's not allowed to appeal. He's appealing. Yeah. But he's, but he, got, he's got to pay the fine first. And then he might get and it And then, then he may get a refund. If, if he wins on appeal. Dude, they're evil. That's, they're evil people. Judge Engron is an evil, evil guy. I think criminal. I kind of agree. Engron really rubbed me the wrong way when he smiled and smirked at the camera. Yeah, they're, they got, they're, they're, they're evil. He took off his glasses dude. and he was like, yeah. And yeah. didn't his wife like post all kinds of anti-Trump stuff on yeah. on the line? Like he should have there's been obvious bias. He so should have nice. recused Clearly. himself. He didn't recuse himself. I'm not sure there's a judge in New York that could give Trump a fair trial, but it, it just, it's crazy. Yeah. But that's where we are. All right, what do we have? Jace says, a friend of mine claimed that her husband works at AT&T. He said they did an update to a router and it failed along with its redundancy. I haven't heard anything else to confirm, though. Yeah, I don't believe it. I've also had uh, I've been contacted by individuals who claim 
that it's a cyber attack, but I've not confirmed that either. And so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we get a lot of messages. AT&T is the one pushing the solar flare thing. Yeah. It's beyond our control, the sun. Problem Girl says, stand your grounds really is delicious, plus butter pecan moonshine to taste. Oof. Mm. Switched from BRCC medium roast. Mm. It can't be overstated how much better it is. Yeah. Sounds stand your grounds is really good. Um, but Appalachian Nights is my favorite coffee just ever. Should you do a brand one called Irish Coffee and then have it be Seamus's brand, but it doesn't have any alcohol in it? Well, so it's we like, we what, actually we we we, we sampled yes. a whiskey a whiskey uh, uh, flavored coffee Ooh. and it didn't work. Oh, really? Yeah, we we Just so we tried thing. and then we're I, I don't know where we ended up with Seamus's. <laughs> I love that guy, Seamus. Come back. He was supposed to, but yeah. then he just ditched us. Get over what here. What the heck? Why? Yeah. Well, because he hates us. Living his life on record. Seamus hates us. It's confirmed. <laughs> Quan Shin says gun advocates need to stop using Luke 2235 to support getting personal arms. You have to read the end of verse 38 where Jesus says enough when his disciples say they've had two swords. Jesus scolds Peter for cutting the captor's ear. Yes, but we talked about that yesterday. Jesus told them not to defend him because his time had come. He knew what he was doing, but they need to defend themselves. Yeah. Wes Nile says the poles are shifting. This is causing Earth to be susceptible to solar flares. We have two massive ones hit Earth last night. Uh, nice. These poles flip. We're in deep-ish. I think that, I don't know if they were actually massive. I don't know if you would call those solar flares last night massive, but they were notable. According to that website we were looking at earlier. What, what the that? Class X? What, what, doesn't, that, doesn't that mean it is big, a big one? I don't know. They said it wasn't big enough to shut down all this oh, tech, though. Okay, okay. So I don't know what the Well, these are precursors to the big one, which is coming. That's what, what Ben if, Davidson was saying when he came on. He's like, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Teach your kids if, now, get them prepared. But what if because of the understanding of the big solar flare, the deep state's just like, we can't let Trump win. So come August, we will EMP this country and claim it was the solar hmm. flare. Yeah, it's or the, or they'll, they'll EMP the world. It's also possible. I don't put anything past these people. Me either. You never know. Put the world back to the ice age. I mean, look, if they really believe in climate change and destroy the planet, why wouldn't they? Yeah. I don't know if they have the capability to actually launch an EMP attack all over the world and shut down everything. Yeah. Let's go. So Cross we says, plans or no? I'm a yeah, pharmacy technician. Plans. Yeah, future plan like get chickens. I'm a pharmacy technician and the insurance outage has been absolutely painful. I couldn't bill state Medicaid. A lot of vulnerable, vulnerable people have been affected. I felt awful having to break this news. Wow. B2 The Rock says the best pancakes ever. I got to be honest. Appreciate it. They're... The best pancakes. They are some really good damn pancakes. They're, I mean, I, I, good. I think they're the best. You got to, see, you got chickens out there in the back. You got to try to fry chicken batter, Tim. We haven't killed them yet. You got to kill one of them. You got to kill one of them. I'm Somebody's sorry. Somebody's got to no, be sacrificed. We, 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 wanna, <laughs> we want to do the roosters. Cousin T's sacrifice. Uh, yes. We'll call them. Yeah, so we want to slow cook, pressure cook the roosters. I want to fry one of them. I don't, the problem is they're layers. They're not broilers. So broiler chickens are the ones that get big, fat, and meaty. Eat them. Yeah. Layers are the ones that lay eggs. So these are all egg chickens. But you can fry anything. That's true. We could. There's we, no excuses. We can fry anything. You know what we should do? <laughs> we should. I got an idea the though. Chickens. So let's, fry roosters and pancakes. Let's slow cook a rooster. <laughs> okay. And then fry it with the mix. That'd be good. Yep. You yeah. think that that'd people, be really tasty? Like, I'm just picking the World Economic Forum talk about us like that. Like we should let's fry. I'm not that they eat humans. I'm not even saying it has to be the world, but like the way we're talking about those animals out there, they don't know we're talking about them, and we're like we're gonna eat one of them. You think there's people on Earth that act like that about about other humans? Probably so. Yeah, I wouldn't Ooh, be surprised. We should cook, yeah. if not eat, just like catalyze, do whatever. All right, Revens Padawan says the Army Corps of Engineers have been prepping for an EMP like attacks for sixty plus years. Comms will be back in seventy two hours and power in major cities within a week. Okay. Wow. That's reassuring. The first three days can be a bit chaotic, so be prepared. If these right. people really think that climate change will destroy the planet in, in two years, they have every incentive to try and launch an EMP to destroy yeah. human technology. Yep. Mm -hmm. Except it could catalyze a nuclear war, which would be even worse for the climate. Right. So. No, the EMPs would shut down all the nukes. Maybe all, maybe not all of them though, and it could cause so much chaos that big explosive weapons are needed. Feel like no, they're needed true. to be used. I'm sure Russia and the United States have EMP shielded nukes. Yeah. Capable off the grid, capable of launching deep even underwater. The, yep, yep. Oh yeah, for sure. So, uh, nuclear submarines. The, the, subs are, yeah. yeah, those subs armed with nukes, nuclear torpedoes or whatever, they're not going to be hit by any by by an EMP. No, I bet they're Faraday cage inside anyway. So, well, it's the water. Do y'all yeah, water too? Yeah, does yeah. anybody here have a bunker? 
No, I got a Faraday cage in my fanny pack, though. You have a bunker? Yes. Can I go? No. <laughs> <laughs> if this shit hit the fan, Tim, let me in the damn bunker. You know how many people want to come in the bunker? <laughs> let, I don't give a damn, Tim. Let hey, me in the bunker. You know what I'm saying? He's the last person in the room to be like, yes, I have a bunker. Come it's on. all booked up in there. Yeah, it's 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 huge. And, um, you know, you don't know where it is. But not everybody can cook, Tim. I can come. I cook. I cook y'all pancakes every morning. I just please. You're making like an please, apocalypse I just, resume. I just, just want like, yeah. look. I have skills. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anything's going to happen that would result in anyone needing to be, be in a bunker. Even if a bomb dropped on DC or something, mm -hmm. we're 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 outside the blast zone. We're outside the blast zone for almost every single nuclear capable weapon. We're uh, the the wind patterns of where we are keep us safe. The and the water flow and all that. Yeah. You live in a city though, right? So. Where are you located? It's tough. Houston, Texas. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be tough. Yeah, well, mm. I like having you around. Come up <laughs> All right, let's read this. Brian Egan says, Ian, I was catching up on the show you mentioned, Cymatics. Reminded me of Nigel Stanford's song, Cymatics. If you haven't seen the video, I highly recommend it. It has a hair-raising ending. Oh, that's cool. Nigel, what was that guy's name? Hey, in at midnight, so we're talking about two hours and ten minutes, Eyes of Advice will be live on YouTube at Timcast Songs. So go on YouTube, search for Timcast, Timcast Music or Timcast Songs or whatever. Subscribe to the channel. S video starring Ian. Yeah, you got to watch it tonight because I'm going to talk about it on the show tomorrow and I don't want to spoil it for you. So watch it. And I'll tell you about the acting experience behind the scenes and what it was like. Matthew Schneider says, does Cousin T sell waffle mix? Yes, I love I do. pancakes, but I love waffles more. Well, can't you use the pancake mix to make waffles? Uh, yes, you can. But it's like a different recipe. But it's a different, it's a different recipe and it has a different taste. But mm. yes, Y'all go to CousinTees.com. I got waffle mix. I got biscuit mix. I have jellies. Jam now, the fried chicken and the waffle mix will go great together. Hmm. Fry some chicken. Put it on top of the waffles. It is going <laughs> to be good. What, what, is I, it, huh? what, was it? what is it about the waffles that makes them better and more... Uh uh, tasty with the chicken. I wouldn't say which one is. Uh, it, they both taste great. What is the waffles? How are they different? The than waffles. The, the waffles are a little bit sweeter, though. I will say that mm. the waffles are a little bit sweeter. So, mm. do you know what ingredients make it different than pancake mix? Is there something specific that goes you know, into you it? Add, you add a different waffle? amount of eggs and like yeah, to make it rise. And yeah. Stuff. So Oil, okay. So right? the so the waffle mix is more complete. It's more complete. So um, now you can now now with the, with the pancake mix you can add water too. You can just like just add water, but you can also add eggs and all of that. Oh. But with the waffle mix, eggs are already added. Oh. Mm. It already has like egg, yeah, so it's 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 more of a complete mix. Oh. Which the egg, yeah, but you don't have to add eggs to the pancake mix, but you can. But the waffles you don't need to at all. Like it's pointless. All right, like a free thinking dog says. Telecom worker here. We're treating it as an attack. Providers rent out bandwidth to other providers. If ATT yeah. is only attacked, it can still impact customers across multiple carriers. Interesting. Yeah, I think the it's it's right just to treat it as an attack, even if it's not. Just right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Admar says, Terrence, my man, if you create your own flower, please put out a product similar to King Arthur Flower. They have quality flower, but went all racist. You know, I was thinking about doing that and having a competition. But and, you, may, and Tim, maybe maybe you can put in because. You know, I'm gonna need some help paying this, uh, giving giving money away. Well, for sure. Yeah. But <laughs> if you make a flower that uses like non pesticide wheat, uh huh, that sh you should do that. Like non pesticide wheat. Not, no pesticide. So there's a lot of people who think that celiac disease is actually just like glyphosate and other pesticides. Mm -hmm. And so instead of having that whole argument, just produce high, high quality organic wheat that doesn't use any of the GMO, any of the garbage. And the guy right, who yeah. started uh, Bob's Red Mill is gone now. So you've really got True. a shot to go to the top of the yeah. market. It was that King Arthur, organic King Arthur flour was some of the best. Yeah. What did, what did they do specifically? Well, I got it pulled up. They had a competition called Baking Pitch right, Fest 2024 right. called Perfect Potluck. And they said uh, it's for person of color led businesses who you had to be eligible. You had to be a person. Jeez, so How much money were, well, they, I, I were they giving away? Like $5,000, I that think? I didn't find yet. Let's find yeah, they were Tim, giving Tim away Cast money. Timcast is a minority-owned business. It is? Yeah. It's me. Well, I'm a black brother. I'm Korean. I need to get my. I need to get mine. You are. You are. You, sh you should You should go on Google and put, you know, you can register your business as minority-owned. Now, Google. do you get any benefits for that? I don't know. You earn ESG score, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Did you put minority owned business? On no. Business? No, because no, I don't want to publish the address to all yeah. the different I don't like putting my race on stuff. Now, what if. Maybe for Casper. Well, there's no benefit think. for you. I guess not. I don't know. I just mm. feel weird saying it. Like, I'm not from the Caucasus. 
I that is always American weird. Guy. Like I, I always but, thought it was weird that they say Caucasian, but it's like no one's from the Caucasus, Caucasus region. Yeah, I don't mind weird listing thing. my race on stuff. I just know that ultimately it's, for me, there's no benefit, right? It's always going to be a bad thing that I'm white in this culture. I don't mind telling you that I'm white, but for yeah. other people... Make, you can't say anything. You can't do anything. There's no benefit, but there, I'll there's, tell you. There's no, yeah. You can you can't even get it. You can't even be involved in a baking competition. I, I grew up with this girl. <laughs> you who, can't bake no biscuits. No, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> I grew up with this girl who was um, donor conceived. Her mom used a sperm donor, yeah. and this sperm donor had been like had left off a lot of stuff about his race. So when she was applying to high schools and colleges, she her mom always had her check Hispanic because yeah. their name. Well, but but Hispanic just means you speak Spanish. Yeah. Well, at the time yeah. we didn't know this, yeah. and her last oh. name was Italian, but it looked like it could be Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. And her mom was like, "Just check the boxes. It's better for you this yeah. way." Which is yeah. Like, you know, I was a... I was wondering about, about the minority owned. If you sign up for that, what's the benefits? Like, it's Black History Month. Nobody told me Happy Black History Month. They're not giving out Black History Month Yo. discounts. There is just no benefit to this celebration. I went the to Papa. I, I, the definition of Hispanic, yeah. according to uh, Oxford, is a Spanish-speaking person living in the U.S., especially one of Latin American descent, especially. So that means if you're a Spanish-speaking person in this country, you're Hispanic. Ian, mi amigo. You see? That's it. That's all I needed. Uh, okay. Uh, Como estas, Paco Nacho? Uh, muy Pico. bien. Donde muy esta bien. la biblioteca? Uh, I no am not sé. Hispanic. I speak no English. getting English. more minority at the, by the minute. This That's is right. crazy. Esta allá. I am a Hispanic Korean American. Wow. There you go. Bueno. Do I get a scholarship or anything oh, like that? When I was in South Well, America, you know, like, New York City is oh, giving what? Their ish, bueno. the, the $53 million they're putting on credit cards to oh, give right. to give to migrants. 10000 per person. I, I just made a video about that. 10000 per person. Dude. Yeah. But I, we don't we don't know if that's ten thousand in total cost to get for the program or if they're literally giving them a ten thousand dollar gift card, because some people are saying they're giving them a debit card with ten grand on it. It might be a debit card with three grand on it, but it costs ten grand to facilitate the program. They shouldn't be person. giving them a damn thing. <laughs> they should be giving them a ride. And back they, to uh, a ride program. back home. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah. And even then, it's asking a lot. Right? Alexandria Cosmo. More Americans should be mad about that. Though. Why? Yeah, no, why? I think more Americans should be mad. I think they, more they, no Americans what, are mad yeah. about it than they ever have been. Right? Like mm -hmm. it is interesting how people have woken up to like when people come here illegally and are given benefits that you're paying for, you suffer. I yeah, feel like there are more people who are awake to this than ever, or at least in New York City. Yeah. yeah. There's There's people on the left too. People on the left are like realizing that like, start, yeah. all those things that should be afforded to me are not coming to me anymore. Right. There were a bunch of um, shelters in Boston that were turning out, tur like turning away yeah. uh, native, like right. people, American citizens who are That's homeless so or crazy, experiencing domestic dude. violence because they That's need the crazy. beds for the migrants. All the black people that uh, that's been asking for reparations should be pissed the right. hell off. Right. Well, mm -hmm. they are. Did you see what they're saying in Chicago? No, what they they're been, saying. Yeah, that I, they're I, being I, replaced. I thought I saw something. Yeah, they, they said they're being replaced. Yeah, it's I'm a like, great oh, replacement. Oh wow. wait, yeah, they've been asking Chicago for reparations forever. No, we ain't got, we don't have any money, but we do have money to give to these illegal immigrants <laughs> who need our help. Damn, what about us? It's a crazy accounting system where it's like there's no money, but actually now we have it. If you're in this plight, yeah, it's like a spit in the face. Yeah, they AOC was like uh, tweeted out these people are fleeing tyranny or something about people fleeing like tyrannical governments, but. They're just economic migrants. A lot of them are Most economic are. migrants. So this whole fleeing but tyranny if, thing is and not And all real. the NGOs that help them crop, they say, you know, claim asylum when you get here. Mm -hmm. It's going to take years to prove yeah. it and it doesn't matter. Oh, man. What do we got? What's, uh, what's this? Uh, Jason Hutchinson says, when the George Floyd incident happened, they originally posted about seven minutes of what was almost a 40 minute long encounter. Right. And then the full video ended up getting leaked. Someone published a full video mm -hmm. where you could see George Floyd in the car saying, take me out of the car, take me out of the car, put me on the ground, put me on the ground. He was saying, I'm going to die. He said that in the car. He was mm -hmm. yelling out oh. that he was going to die. He like, was chewing on a speedball. Mm. And he had a heart issue. Saying, I can't breathe before any knee was on his neck as well. That's a very notable thing that I noticed. When I, when I first saw that leak, I saw that he didn't say that at all. until and, and he, he said it way before he ever had any police contact like... Uh, People were indicted for, or not indicted, but charged for. Yeah, he was complaining about not being able to breathe before. And yeah. they did two autopsies on him, yeah. which was mm -hmm. misleading. Yep. That was, yeah. uh, uh, do JD drugs. says, Elon should buy Vice for libs of TikTok. So <laughs> Vice is going to keep the domain and they're, and they're going to still exist. So Vice.com will probably just be like a placeholder for their production. 
And then they said they might sell to Refinery29 or something like that. Or I, have, I don't know idea what that means. So Vice still exists as a company. It's just basically a shell of what it used to be. Do you think, uh, who owns Aunt Jemima? Pepsi? Do you think they would sell me that name? You think they'd sell me her name? Nah. Probably Well, you're not. a minority-owned business. I think so you should, should just use it. You think I should just use it? Well, they abandoned, they abandoned it. So if you start using it, Tim, they will. I'm a, Tim, I'm going to use it. You told well, me you, to. You, you talk to your lawyer. <laughs> no, I'm talking to you, Tim. No. <laughs> Take a look at this. Yeah. This logo that I'm holding up for 50 years is was the most iconic image in skateboarding. It still is. But the company abandoned the trade. They, they abandoned the copyright. They abandoned the trademark. And they've they've rejected it, denounced it, and called it racist. You're right because they have to use it. They they have yes. to use the image. And if they and stop using it, and they say they're not going to use it, they've abandoned it. And I can use it. And we've been using it for I think like a year now, and they've not said a thing about what it. If, what if they're using it in another country? But I guess when you are doing a trade, that's a different mark, filing, a different country, a different filing. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, everybody, if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends. Head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member, and you can watch the members only uncensored show coming up in a few minutes. Not so family friendly, but it is a lot of fun. So put the kids to bed and come hang out. As a member, you can submit questions and actually call in to talk to us and our guest. So do that. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Terrence, do you want to shout anything out? Uh, Yeah, um... Y'all make sure y'all come to this after show because I'm finna I'm gonna be doing a lot of cussing. But go to cousintees.com and get some of my pancakes, y'all. They are so damn good. Um, get the fried chicken mix. I'm taking the box that I gave to Tim back, so <laughs> there'll be an extra one on the website for you. So go to cousintees.com and get some great pancakes. There's a cussing tea. I was like, oh, is it cussing? That's a nice cousin tees. Cuss on no, I thought be cussing. Cussing. Cause I get the cuss for real. For real. I get the really let it all out. Well, uh, we gotta get Tim to the after, after show. Yeah, after we, got, we gotta do this. Yeah, yeah, I've been waiting for that. I came for the after show. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then everyone should go to the after show. I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for SCNR.com. That's Scanner News. You can find all of our work at Timcast News on Instagram and Twitter, and you can follow me personally on Instagram at. Uh, Hannah Claire B and on Twitter at HC Brimlow. One day I'll make those the same thing. Ian, it's been fun to see you. Smart. You too, Hannah Claire. And I also am a, a, like a lion in a cage and we're about to open the gates. So get over there to TimCast.com to watch it happen in real time. And Terrence, you're like the American dream. You are like an example of a human that came from, I wouldn't say nothing, but from like what you would consider adversity. And now you're worth I don't know how much money. Building I don't know a if business. it's even public, but uh, congratulations, and it's inspiring. I am, I am worth a billion bucks because I live in the greatest country, and I'm uh -huh. able to come from Hell foster yeah. care and own my own business. That's, I mean, that's priceless. Right on. That's Truly. priceless. Good to see you, man. Thank you. I and appreciate everyone it. Everyone else, check out Eyes of Advice on Timcast Music. I think, is that the uh, URL? Two hours. Two hours Eyes going live. Eyesofadvice.com will get you, I think, to the iTunes, but uh, yeah, at Timcast Songs on YouTube. There Subscribe now. Uh, I'm Serge.com. Pleasure seeing you always, Terrence. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, I'll make sure to buy some waffle mix uh, as well for Waffle Sensei as well. He makes right waffles on. too, waffles. There you uh, go. Yeah, cheers. See you we later. Will, we will see you all over at TimCast.com in about a minute. Thanks for hanging out.